Well, a good evening to you. Welcome in to the Danville Dashers Broadcast Network here streaming live on YouTube with Federal Prospects Hockey League action tonight. The Danville Dashers taking on the Delaware Thunder after a riveting first game to the home weekend here for the Dashers and the road games obviously for Delaware here as they play host to them at the David S. Palmer Arena. Dennis, you got to talk a little bit to Danville Dashers head coach Ray Trombley before the game. Tell me a little bit about what he thought about last night's performance, why they scored four in a row after a very sluggish first period. Yeah, he said that sometimes the team has the tendency to play down to the competition a little bit, and he wasn't too happy with how they came out a little bit flat last night. And I can tell you, Nate, I was down by uh, the rink watching warm-ups last night and again tonight, there was a little more intensity to the squad tonight than we saw last night. He's not really sure what woke up the team, but that big hit that Gordy took in front of the net when there was a big collision or the Charlie Penns Jr. showboating celebration at center ice when he scored. Wasn't sure what woke his team up, but he was sure glad they put on a good show in the third period. Yeah, and that's kind of where it counted was in that third period. They were down two to zero after just a short little bit into that third final frame. It would prove to be the final frame, but maybe not exactly in the way that we thought it was gonna go. And those four goals kind of serve as a token of what we actually would have thought that Ashers were gonna start off the game doing here, trying to shake off Aaron Taylor early and often. And they'd actually proved that as the game drew on, Taylor, the Dashers started to find some weak spots, shooting under the arm, a little bit above the leg pad in the blocker side, especially on the stick side. So that was where they beat him last night. It'll be interesting to see if they target that again. And got very creative as the game went on. There was a great pass from behind the net by A.J. Tessarero that was able to cash in and just some good, good playmaking in the offensive end there in that third period. And then of course getting that empty net goal, which was actually a very impressive empty net goal. He was being pressed out there by the blue line and fired at home. So. Just a very good performance to end the game last night. And I think coach wants to see that same intensity. You know, Aaron Taylor just had so much confidence about him in the net in the first two periods. As soon as that first goal went in, it seemed like the confidence went away and the Dashers were able to, uh, to get on the board early and often in that uh, third period. Yeah, no doubt about it. And as we've seen a couple of times so far this season, head coach Ray Trombley for the Danville Dashers feeling comfortable enough to switch up the starter spot here on the second game of the evening, giving the legs, arms, head, and just about everything else that could have been injured last night of Jesse Gordachuk a break. He took a couple hard shots last night, some hard helmet popping hits. It's kind of like when you used to see, uh, who was it, Sean Taylor in the NFL would come through. Now, nobody speared Gordachuk last night. I should mention that, but the way the helmet can pop off, it's reminiscent of some of the hits that that guy used to deliver. It was a big hit. Gordachuk is fine. Uh, this is the, the joy that Coach Ray Trombley has this year in that he has two very strong goaltenders that not only he has confidence in, but his defensemen and his team has confidence in as well. So I think we're gonna see a good performance out of Harley tonight. Yeah, I think so as well. Harley White has been more than satisfactory in the backup role and even in the starter role so far this season. He was getting stretched up and ready to come off the bench last night, looked excited. Tonight, he gets his shot again and he'll make good on it, I'm sure, just as he has in the past. A couple of times he's been shooken, or shaken, I should say, from the start in the early minutes. So it'll be interesting to see him try and get his feet under himself here in the early goings. He looked great in warmups too, so he's ready to go. He's gonna have a big game tonight. And then a good game is what he'll need as we do look at a Delaware squad that seemingly had the Dashers on the ropes for part of the game last night until Danville struck back with four straight goals. Quite the feat and something that's worth noting here as both teams kind of switching things up a little bit. The starting lineup's pretty much staying the same for Delaware with Aaron Taylor in goal, Thomas Municello at the left wing, Mark Simonetta at the right wing, Evgeny Demin at center, Charlie Penns Jr. at left defense, and Anthony Pisano at right defense. Starting in goal for the Danville Dashers, as we said, Harley White wearing the number 29 and starting in place of Jesse Gordachuk. At the left wing, it's gonna be Artem Efimov-Barakov. At the right wing, Jesse Nayer 
And at the center spot, Mitch Atkins and the defensive pairing tonight starting out for the Dashers. Sam Turner, the forward slash defenseman, and Seth Ensor on the right defenseman spot. It's safe to say that Coach Ray Tremblay isn't afraid to come out and attack right from the gate, Dennis. Yeah, and, and Jesse Nahair had a big game last night, so it makes a lot of sense to put his line out there to start tonight. It'll be very interesting to see what they can do with that. But here's the great thing is all three lines uh, get pretty equal playing time here with the Dashers this year. And that's the benefit of having such great depth on this team, something that the Danville Dashers greatly lacked last season. A lot of good players, and some of them you'll see tonight donning a Delaware Thunder jersey, but it just didn't come together as the depth wasn't there. Got tired legs, too many injuries, a couple coaching switches. We'll leave out comments on that. We'll let you be the judge of that. But we're going to take a pause here for the National Anthem, and we'll be right back for the puck drop. Kaiser with your national anthem here as we get ready to drop the puck on Saturday night FPHL action here at the David S. Palmer Arena. A good night for some hockey, a great crowd out here tonight. Last night's numbers a little bit shocking. It seemed like it was very loud and pretty crowded in here last night. Maybe coming up a little bit short of that 900 mark tonight. I don't think we're going to have any problem getting to that, Dennis. No, I don't think so at all. Toy Story uh, theme night here tonight for the kids and the the not so uh, kids, the, the big kids. Uh, so I guess uh, we're saying that this game is going to be played from infinity and beyond. I would say so. It's Faith and Family Night, the official title here. And that's, of course, presented by our good friends over at Robinson Chiropractic. By the way, that starting lineup, a courtesy of Danville Township. We'll get their logo up there until we drop the puck here. Sorry to Danville Township out there. We do love you guys. We didn't mean to not have your logo up there. And Danville Township, the Vermilion County Farm Bureau, two great organizations that sponsor a lot of things in the area. They'll have their own night coming up. I'll tell you about that later on in the broadcast. For now, though, we're going to drop the puck here at the David S. Palmer Arena, and it's won by Danville and played out of the defensive zone. A long and high shot right over to Barakov after it comes off the glass. Instead, it's going to come back to Delaware here. We're going to try and work it up the right-hand side. And early goings here, pretty fast out there. A couple of big hits started to develop last night. A little bit of a scrum at the end. An open shot here, but it bounces off the stick of Artem Efimov Barakov. Instead, a shot from the point. Rebound in! Yes. Early goal. Danville Dashers take the lead. Mitch Atkins. Oh, my goodness. What did we say? We said they were going to come out with a lot of fire and energy tonight. And just 29 seconds in, they've cashed in for the first time of the night. That's the most emotion I've ever seen Mitch Atkins show so far. He's such a calm and composed guy. A great goal from him and a way to be there right in the right opportunity. Some great early passing from Danville, and they're on the board just 29 seconds off the clock here on Saturday night. That's a way to start it. Oh, yeah, that got the crowd into it. Not that they need a lot of help here. The Dashers fan base, unbelievable. And another opportunity there. That one tipped up and out of play over Aaron Taylor. So that's three good opportunities in 39 seconds and already cashed in once. 
The Dashers offense coming out, fired on all cylinders tonight. And you can see why Ray Trombley went with an attacking mindset here tonight with Jesse Dayer filling in at a left defenseman spot, especially with two of your defensemen out, actually, as we see Ben Bucall out as well. And Delaware gonna work it down the left-hand side and try and get one back, a hard strike right into the glove of Harley White. That first stop for a goaltender, always key to set the tone for the night. Good vision, saw it all the way, and looked it right into the glove, holding on for the faceoff. And the faceoff, it will be to the right of Je or Harley White here. That's going to take some time to get used to. And it's won by Danville and played into the defensive zone, carrying it behind the goal here is Troy Murray. Murray on it, Delaware pressing. Three guys over here in the offensive zone. And this one fired out to Quintos. Quintos throws a longer one. It's going to be Fred Hine that ends up picking it up after a little confusion with Zalak. Zalak maybe going to try and hound this one down on the boards. He does for a moment until it's recovered by Delaware. Turn back over to Danville. Now coming the other way with it, number 32, Charlie Penns Jr. Had a heck of a slap shot goal last night here from the other end. And that's a good opportunity there for Delaware. It just ekes out to the right of Harley White. And this one played up along the boards and kept in nicely by Jordan Clark. He's met with Patrick Zalak's body here as they're going to try and push it out of their zone. And Danville's Fred Hine throws it down. That one off the stick of Aaron Taylor. Calmly, cleanly, and securely. Never in doubt there from Taylor. A hit laid there in the back. That was Browsen coming out. And that one bounces off the glove of Harley White. Early going. You know he'd like to get his glove onto that one. And Danville almost had an opportunity there with some nice link-up play from the Vets. Justin Browsen and A.J. Tessarero. It was turned over to Delaware, though, and now coming the other way with it after a turnover is Justin Browsen. Browsen with a fake, gets past one. Nice stick tie there by the Delaware defenseman. On coverage on that was Brian Dunford, the former Dasher. And that one is actually going to come all the way down for an icing. And we're going to come back down to the other side right in front of the goal of Aaron Taylor. Just two minutes into the first period, we already have seen each one of the lines out there once for the Dasher, so good quick line changes to keep those legs fresh. One by Danville, bouncing into Aaron Taylor, covers that one up, kind of like a ground ball in the infield, just had a little bit of a weird bounce rolling on its side, and we've seen that often here. If it's not a weird puck bounce off the board, it's a weird puck bounce off the ice at this arena. It does kind of have a mind of its own. Makes it a little quirky, but the other guys like to play with some interesting arenas, and this is definitely one of them. One by Danville. Browsing out, going to fire one from the side. Almost redirected in there by Tessarero. Just gets past his stick, though, as it's kept in by Danville. It's turned over to Delaware, though, in the meantime. Now coming the other way with it. It's going to be number five, Evgeny Demin, that picks it up. He goes out to the right side, and a shot doesn't get as far as Harley White before it's blocked up. This one coming to the left side. A shot goes behind White and back all the way around to Kieran Devine. Down into the corner, that's Simonetta with it. As this shot wraps its way around, it comes all the way back around to the starting defenseman. And was that on the left-hand side there? That was Anthony Pisano who fires it in, and we're gonna have a frozen puck and a face-off. So a quick strike from Danville with 17, 21 left to go right now. They are up one, scoring with just 30 seconds gone in the first period. Quite a way to start through the sick of Mitch Atkins, who was recently acquired from a trade relatively recently, earlier this season. What a start he's had to a young career here in Danville. Played out by Danville, almost turned over. Atkins does well to get it back, but it's turned over to Devine. Devine's pass intercepted here by Seth Ensor. Ensor with a shot that's wide and right of Aaron Taylor. Scooped up by Atkins. Atkins fires across across the middle of the ice. No one there to touch it. It's going to come all the way back to Sam Turner. Turner over to the left side here for Seth Ensor. Ensor with a long stretch pass. Just bounces off the skate of Jesse Nayer. Was a nice looking stretch pass. And instead, it's going to be Demin that fires it the other way. Turned over at the middle of the ice, and it comes all the way back to Turner. Turner with a long stretch pass down the right-hand side. Coming down the right-hand side, Danville with another opportunity. Almost turned over. Delaware does eventually get it back. Uh, it's turned over on a short pass there to Danville, playing along the boards. Nobody seeming to get very good control of this one. It skeets out in front of Aaron Taylor, who tries to pound it away, but instead a shot goes wide right, and Delaware come the other way with it. Off the back heel there of Evan McIntosh, and it comes all the way back down the ice, and Danville trying to clear this one out of their defensive zone through Troy Murray. Murray's pass off the boot of Mitch Atkins, and trying to do anything he can to get away with it was Barakov. 
thrown down the ice, looking for a stretch pass, and that one's going to come back for an icing. That was Logan Hoggood down there trying to link up with Fred Hine. Just didn't quite get the pass right on where he needed it. Last night, Troy Murray had a couple of occasions where he tried to bank the puck off the boards in a clearing attempt. Had some trouble turning it over. He was working on that during warm-ups tonight big time. Face off here to the left of Harley White. One by Danville, but one back with a nice check there from Eric Masters, whose stick was held, and he shakes that one off, and Danville able to get it back before he can recover. Now pressed along the boards here. We'll see who comes out of the little three-man scrum with it. Right now, Delaware threatening to get it. It's Evan McIntosh in there as well as number 20, Taylor Cutting, the former Dasher. Long stretch pass, kept in nicely by to Cristofaro, but turned over. Tripped up there was Patrick Zalak, and now coming the other way, Quintos. Quintos with an opportunity, a nice save, Aaron Taylor, who gets down with a blocker to force that one out, and Delaware now has it in their defensive zone. It's turned over, opportunity in front of that, in the pads oh, oh, oh. of Aaron Taylor, and Patrick Zalak almost nutmegged Aaron Taylor into a goal. Taylor just able to close the pipes and shove that one home, and we'll have a face-off in the Dashers' offensive zone. What a great shift for Tyler Quintos. Did everything but end up with that red light on. Great creative playmaking by Quintos. A hustle play there as well as we have a face-off to the right of Harley White. It's won by Delaware and played into the back there by Devine. Yeah. A big hit check there on number nine, John Doherty, as that one was almost turned over, but it comes all the way back to Bryce Litke. Oh, with a nice stick move there. That was number nine, the new addition, Brett Menton, who got past in a, De a Delaware attacker who was looming. Now coming around the other side of the boards with it. Danville has it along the offensive boards. Down the left side here, it's turned over to Delaware. Now coming the other way with it is Delaware on the right-hand side here. And that one's going to bounce a weird bounce off the boards. Harley White well out of his goal to get that one. Thrown back behind the boards here, going to have it as Brad Denny. Denny on it now, and he throws it over to Brett Menton. Menton lays it off and coming hot down the right-hand side here is Danville with another opportunity. That one nicely sticked away by number 95, Jordan Clark, as that one is coming back down the other end of the ice through number five, Evgeny Demin. Demin with it now. He throws the left-hand side. A nice save, Harley White, as that one was looming danger. Had an open net. Now Danville's got a man advantage coming down the other way. Playing it through the middle. Here's Atkins. A nice skate back, but he's intercepted by Demin, who plays it forward here to number 20. Eight, Thomas Municello. Municello to the right side. Aaron Taylor, or Harley White had to do everything he could to get out of that one. Got a nice stick out there to interrupt that pass attempt. Too many former dashers on these teams, man, <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, a good hustle play there by Jesse Nair to just poke it out, but he's intercepted by the starter there. That would be Pisano. Danville with it down the right-hand side here, out to the point. That one leaks out on Seth Ensor, and he's going to retreat and bring it back as the Dashers get back on side. Over to Turner. Turner tries to throw it forward to Zalak. Instead, thrown down into the zone by Kieran Devine. And Danville's got it now in their defensive zone. And Aaron passed there off the boards, turned over to Cutting as he throws this one down. He's looking for Evan McIntosh. And McIntosh does indeed find it and holds off Sam Turner on the other end. Fred Hine to try and slap this one out of the zone. Instead, it comes back to McIntosh, who tries to find somebody over the middle. Nicely kept in there by Delaware. That was Taylor Cutting on that one. Is Aaron or Harley White boards that one off with his stick into the right-hand side. Taylor Cutting drops his stick. Not sure where that one came from. Oh, a nice block there by Patrick Zalak, and he comes up shaking his wrist off. Stays on, and Danville trying to do anything they can to clear this one. They do. Fred Hine has that one bounce off his stick, and it comes all the way over to Charlie Pence Jr. Back to Fred Hine. Lots of turnovers here in the early going. A Fred Hine pass is swallowed up by Aaron Taylor, and rightfully so. He almost connected there with Tessarero, who would have been waiting with an open net in front of him. That was close. That, that was a game of inches there for Hine to Tessarero. Very smart play by Taylor getting in the way of that pass. Delaware wins the faceoff and wins it back from Danville, but Danville's actually going to have it here in their offensive zone. 12.50 left to go here in the first period as this one's played along the boards. Nearly turned over there as a hard slap shot comes from Murray on the point, bounces oh. off the boards and right back into Aaron Taylor's right blocker. He gloves that one up and we'll have another faceoff. Smart play by Troy Murray. Not only kept that offensive play alive, but the uh, Delaware player almost had a breakout there for a breakaway. Stick tied in the faceoff circle. We'll see who gets a stick in there to grab it. It was Browsen as he fires a shot on. It goes wide left of Aaron Taylor. Delaware now come the other way with it. 
Turned over to Danville. No one seems to know where the puck is. Instead, it's wrapped all the way around. A dangerous Whoa. bounce off the boards as Harley White was caught out of his goal there off the boards. Just hit that crease where the Zamboni comes in. He's sure onto that one, though, and that slap shot from the point. Glove save, no worries off the stick of John Doherty. Thankfully, nobody was home from Delaware. That would have been a tie game. And a dangerous situation there for Danville as they were looming with Delaware coming and Danville on their heels there for a moment, it seemed, on the defensive side as they struggled to clear their defensive zone. They don't struggle to do it that time here as they do get it out and Delaware dumps it down for a change. Trying to be touched up there by Barakov. It was tipped on the way down, icing waved off. We have a penalty coming up here. Looks like it's gonna be Slash. against Delaware. You're gonna see time in the box is Jordan Clark, who's playing with a face mask tonight. No problem with that, just an observation for those of you at home. And we're gonna feed our first Jenna Worth power play. We saw an early power play last night for Danville, so it'll be interesting to see if they can capitalize. They did end up having a pretty decent time on the power play last night, despite missing a lot of opportunities. They were about 50% here. Nayer in front of goalie, passes it over to Fred Hine. It gets touched up nicely there by Evgeny Demin. Shot from the points, hard off the leg and out of play. That one came off the stick of Justin Browsen and the leg there of Delaware's defenseman Municello. One weird thing we're gonna see tonight, there's only two right-handed players on the entire Delaware roster. That's gonna be a little bit of a problem for face-offs tonight for the Dashers. That is just not normal. That is odd. Anyway, one by Danville here. It's played along the boards there by Tessa Rero, who's holding on to it with the foot. Brought out by Nayer, who's looking for a pass. Instead, elected to bring it down the net. He's got space. Nobody really pressuring him behind as he finds Fred Hine. Browsen slotting in at defenseman for this power play. And a shot is trying to redirect it. There was Tessa Rero. It was fended off by Aaron Taylor and his defenseman. Danville still with it along the boards. 11-16 left to go in the first period. 11-10, or 1-10 left to go on the power play for Danville. Played out to the point here. Some not exactly pretty passing from Danville, but it gets the job done as this one finds Fred Hine in the corner. Over to Browsen, would have had an open net. Just seemed to hesitate a little bit there. A nice hustle play by Turner almost keeps it in, but at least it keeps Danville with possession and they don't have to fully reset. 49 seconds left to go here in the power play. 10.50 left to go in the first period. And Danville electing to skate this one out from behind, getting a shift change there as Jesse Nayer comes out. And on for him, Brad Denny is coming out. Carrying it the other way, here is Danville. It's Mitch Atkins bringing it down. Atkins tied up along the board and it's touched up by Barakov. Barakov out to Denny at the point. Denny with no real options here as he elects to pitch it down to Mitch Atkins. Trying to find anyone he can here as Aaron Taylor switching from side to side. Trying to man those poles. And this one won by Delaware. Turned over though, it's Quintos with an opportunity over to Atkins. Atkins fires, it's redirected high of the goal of Aaron Taylor, but a nice pass there by Quintos to set up Atkins. Point shot comes off the boards hard here and we have one second, zero seconds left on the Jenna Worth power play. And coming back on side here, tripped up. Danville with an opportunity. Quintos stops it home, the five hole. Big play by Tyler Quintos. He is having a great playmaking game already. And that's two nothing Dashers. And Danville thought there should have been a penalty there, but I think they'll take that one. And scoring, nonetheless, was Tyler Quintos, fed there by Mitch Atkins, who should have a two point night already this evening. Here with 9.57 left to go in the first period. Danville up two to zero, almost a complete change from what we saw last night. Although there are more goals scored, I would say. We did finish for the first frame last night scoreless. So it's a little bit different here as we are seeing the Danville Dashers come out with a quick start. Coming out with the energy they had at the end of the third last night. That'll keep them from doing a little extra skating at practice on Monday. Yeah, I would say so. As you heard it there, Tyler Quintos does get the goal. Delaware looking to strike back here in a hurry. Ryan Kerr has it along the boards here. Kerr on it, he's fired off there by two Danville Dashers as this one actually played out and dangerous attack there from Delaware. Shot to the right of Harley White as he's gonna fall on this one and swallow it up. 
A nice outlet pass there from Brian Dunford out to the point where the shot was fired on by John Doherty and just to the right there of White who covers it up and we'll have our first media timeout as a result. We got through the first half of that first period pretty fast. Yeah, we did. 7.27 here in the central time zone. This game obviously the primetime game here tonight. Let's go ahead and take a look across the board here at the FPHL scores. Right now, Carolina up on Danbury after dropping one to the hat tricks last night. They're in the second period. That game is at three to two in Danbury. Over in Elmira, Elmira playing the Columbus River Dragons and having a better time at it than the Danville Dashers did last weekend. In the second period, Elmira up by a score of three to one. Now over to Watertown, where the Battle Creek Rumblebees are in town. At the start of the second period, the Watertown Wolves and Battle Creek Rumblebees are tied at one apiece in that one. Battle Creek's goal coming on a power play, and Watertown's goal also coming on a power play. Funny how that seems to trend. Over in Port Huron, the men are icebreakers coming into town. That one at the very start, one minute into the second period, is tied at one to one. And of course, here at the David S. Palmer Arena, downtown Danville, the Danville Dashers up, a score of two to zero. And we have a face-off here to the right of Harley White that stopped up a little bit. Charlie Penn's talking to the one of the linesmen. And getting some confirmation, I think, on things. Maybe Charlie was asking if his 50-50 ticket was the winner that Tommy B just announced. That would be that would be kind of interesting if the player <laughs> wins really the 50 50 man. He's got to go skating up to get his money. He'd probably still get into the Hall of Fame before <laughs> Pete Rose will. <laughs> Faceoff finally coming here to the right side of Harley White. Starting in tonight for Jesse Gordachuk, who is fine and getting a rest. He's there on the bench. You can see him to our left side of the screen here. Mm -hmm. Levi Armstrong on the right wing. Armstrong, a hard shot off the right blocker of Aaron Taylor. That might be the hardest shot I've seen Armstrong fire so far this year. It looked good. Armstrong had to basically jump over Patrick Zalak there to avoid crushing him on the side. Armstrong doing a nice team hustle there as Fred Hine fires a looping shot. That had a knuckle on it. That made Aaron Taylor kind of think twice about what was going on as he finally clears that one out and it comes all the way back to Seth Ensor. Ensor with it now out there with Sam Turner. The starting pair in the absence of a couple key Danville defensemen. Play a lot of minutes nonetheless before that as Danville works into two on two situations. Zalak tries to carry it. Oh, a shot there from Quintos. That was a hard backhanded shot. And this one's out in front of the goal of Aaron Taylor and he knocks it away to Taylor Cutting. Cutting gonna try and find a pass here to Masters. Doesn't quite get there, but Masters does track it down in the end as he fires that one down and Sam Turner picks it up. Turner passed one man, that was Taylor Cutting on the back end. As Turner gonna fire this one down to the right side of Aaron Taylor, who fires it back out. He does a nice little soccer giveaway there with the back foot over to his attacker. And on the other side of that was Evgeny Demin, but it was turned over and Demin ends up winning it back anyway. No harm, no foul. An opportunity here for Delaware from the right side. Pass intercepted there. Some nice backtracking play from Danville. Open in front of net there, as Harley White had to give it at all to get out of that situation right there. Barakov does a nice job getting back on side here as Nayer carries it in. Right in front of net, Barakov! Oh. Save Aaron Taylor with a beauty. Wow, I thought he had it. And so did many in the crowd. Great and play. Aaron Taylor has robbed them, and that one just eked out of the glove of Taylor on the rebound. Rebound not able to be buried there. It was close but no cigar, 7.48 left in the first period. That was a tougher shot than the two that have gone by him. Yeah, true. Brad Denny on this one, trying to redirect it. There is Atkins, Atkins out in front of net. On the right-hand side here, Danville gonna fire a shot. That one off the blocker there of Aaron Taylor. Now on the right-hand side here, Danville still has it. Wrapping around, an opportunity there. Atkins doing a great job at creating. Atkins and Quintos might see their ice time increased here tonight if they can keep this up on fresh skates. In the possession of Delaware now, who've struggled to combine anything here. It's brought down by Municello. Trying to create it on his own. He gets past three defenders, ends up having to carry it into the board. He's gonna try and shove it backhanded here. It's taken away there by Danville. And on that one was number eight, Mitch Atkins again. Look at him go. The Energizer Bunny. I don't know, I think Nick Gullo might have that one locked up actually, <laughs> now that I think about it. That one played off the boards of the Delaware bench. We're gonna have a stoppage here. Not really sure. 
It's coming all the way back down to the right of Aaron Taylor, though, one way or another. Looked like it might have just ended up being an icing after all. Thought it could have been a too many men penalty as both sides got kind of caught there in the middle of it with a puck that came really close. Delaware wins the face off and that one was thrown out. We'll see if they rule it as being tipped. They do. No, they don't, okay. At first it looked like they waved it off down here on this side, but the man who was right on top of it, the official gets the call there and Danville gonna go on another Jenna Worth power play. Good job by the officials conferring before they uh, made the final decision. And the, the Dashers players gave him a little help on that one though. Yeah, that was actually the head official, Paul Jean there, who ended up making the final call and it was called for a delay a game. Tied up, AJ Tesserero wanted something with it and it's nicely cleared by Delaware. A hand-eye move by Sam Turner keeps Danville in action. All the way out here to Tessarero. Fred Hine and Justin Browsen also out there with him. Browsen with it now on the point. Oh, lots of space there for Justin Browsen, just where he likes to be. A heck of a save. Aaron wow. Taylor's glove is on fire the last couple of minutes. Dasher's offense just swarming the net, waiting for a rebound, but nothing came loose. But my goodness, what a different attack from the Dashers tonight than we saw in the first period last night. Out to Browsen, across to Turner. Turner with a slap shot pass that goes down to Tessarero. Tessarero tries to find something in the middle. It was redirected off a handful of sticks here and now played out to the point to Browsen who slips up, trying to get it as Delaware, trying to play chase there was Demin. Instead, Browsen holds him off with a body and gets the puck back as Nayer carries across the blue line and back into action. 114 left to go here in the Jenna Worth power play. As Danville up a man right now thanks to a delay of game. And that one nicely dealt with by Delaware as they throw it all the way back down the ice. Fresh legs for the Dashers here on the power play. Holding behind net Danville. Not holding any longer as Mitch Atkins is out in a hurry. Lightning strike coming down the ice here is Quintos. Quintos dumps it down into the boards for Atkins. Atkins with a fine pass to Brad Denny. Go! No goal oh, waved off, they but the it. second one is a goal. <laughs> And Quintos creating another one or finishing another one. We're going to have to get a whirling on that. That bounce was a heck of a challenge. I think Barakoff is going to get credit for this goal. Either way, Danville up 3-0 to zero here. Boy, what a nice little duo there on the power play, mixing it up and having Quintos and Atkins, two guys who have really been creating a lot of plays and a lot of opportunities. And they get another one here to cash in on the power play, 3 nothing Dashers. 5.29 left to go here in the first period. Another opportunity here through A.J. Tessarero. Tyler Quintos getting the official goal there. I thought it was. He was the first one with his hands up. It looks like we might have another penalty called here on Anthony Pisano, perhaps. Could be also on Patrick Zalak. He was in the area. Yeah. Somebody's going to go. I think we're going to see a Dasher go this time. It looks like it. The Dasher board is open. No one from Delaware heading into the box as we're going to get our first serve pro penalty kill of the weekend. And that's a weird stat, too. Wow. Danville up three to zero here. Two goals already tonight from Tyler Quintos. Mitch Atkins with three points on the night. Two assists and a goal of his own. Trailing official saw something he didn't like and skated in real quick to make that call. And within the span of the first period, the actually the first 15 minutes of the game, Tyler Quintos and Mitch Atkins have basically put the Dashers up by a score of three to zero. As we go to the serve pro penalty kill, right here in Danville on a Saturday night that started with an electric vibe. Sure feels like Saturday night, maybe not in Danville, maybe Sin City the way this game's starting now. <laughs> Talk about electric compared to last night's events. Yeah, I think they uh, got a good talking to uh, after the second period last night. Trying to pressure this one here was Danville. Instead, it's coming the other way through number 28, Municello. A shot from the right-hand side is high of Harley White. That one came off the stick of number 33, Anthony Pisano. Nice to get a little cushion here for Harley so he can just relax and go. 
if the Dashers can kill off this penalty, they could finish off this first period in really, really good shape. 440 left to go in that mentioned period here as this faceoff's won by Delaware. Long shot from the point looking for Pisano. Man, is he a roadblock in front of the net? Let me tell you, that's a big dude as this one's fluttered out of the zone all the way to Aaron Taylor. Nick Gullo Hello. out getting some minutes, and he wins one back for Danville as Tessarero is able to get it. Actually, Barakov on it. It's turned over, though, to Mark Anthony Simonetta. Nice having Gullo's uh, speed and quickness out there on a penalty kill. Pens to Simonetta. Simonetta skating past any and every Danville Dasher here on his way to the net. A shot that is blockered off by Harley White. Out to Pens on the point. Pens with a hard oh, shot. Nice it's blocked up by, by Nick Gullo. Well, we did call in the Energizer Bunny earlier. <laughs> he was trying to make a challenge and say, Mitch, you can't have my title. I'm sorry. Simonetta on this one now. He's going to see if he can be the Energizer Bunny for this Delaware team. Instead, the pass is turned over to Hawgood, who sends it down the ice to Taylor. Taylor cutting now on the break here as he's going to look to find anyone. And likes to dump it back. He had a man cutting in the front, just had his head down. This one thrown all the way down the ice by Danville to Aaron Taylor. Getting a stick on it to slow it down a little bit was Bryce Litke. Didn't do it enough to get it to stop, though. One last uh, rush here. As this serve pro penalty kill is going to expire, and we're going to have an icing. And right on cue. Uh, one second left. One I'm second going. left. And not thrilled to still be in the penalty box, I'm sure, is the Danville Dashers player that's chilling in there. That's all you can really do if you're Patrick Zalak right now. Just kind of hang around till it's over. And it should be over now. As he's going to get out of the box. Danville back to full strength on the serve pro penalty kill that's been killed. Eric Masters with a shot that goes wide right of Harley White. Comes all the way back around. Fred Hine thought he had an opportunity at it. Instead, sent back down that one on net there of Harley White and gathered up by Danville, sent all the way around the boards as far as Anthony Pisano is going to pick it up first as Danville gets a shift change. On it now, Menton as Delaware with a dangerous takeaway there. Danville a little bit worried. Brad Denny going at it right now, and on the other end of it is Young, Brendan Young on the other end of it, as that was dangerous, almost a score there for Danville. As this one, maybe a little bit of temper starting to flare is that's an offside that's going to come back, and that's not going to do anything to be a lack of frustration, that's for sure. What a crazy turn of events. You had two players going at it down in the Dashers defensive end while the Dashers were trying to, to score a goal on the other end. And then as the puck got out, you had Tessarero mixing it up back in the uh, Delaware defensive end while the puck was coming forward. So. Getting a little active here. That was Brennan Young tying it up there with Brad Denny, a longtime FPHL vet. That one almost uh, found the press box. Almost up there to our friends from uh, Delaware who made the trip here. He was on his feet. He was ready. He's ready. He told me he was he's a goalie. Ready to make the when glove save. That, up, so he was a, ready for it. That makes a lot of sense because he had the glove side out. A hard shot there from Browson as the stick of number two Ryan Kerr is lost. 2.20 left to go here. Delaware going to have a break down the left-hand side. Wrapping around the goal. Pestering, and that one is out wide right. As just unable to complete it there was number 59, Brian Dunford. Just couldn't wrap it around enough, and Harley White doing just enough to throw it back down. We do have a blown stoppage here. Yeah, I think we're uh, going to see another penalty It's going to be a penalty on Seth Ensor. Yeah, I thought I saw a hand up, but I wasn't really sure who was going to get uh, sent to the old sin bin. And I believe that was a slash that was called again. Fired high there on the serve pro penalty kill again is Danville. This one thrown down into the box. Trying to get to it, Troy Murray. And instead it's won by Delaware and pushed off of it by Murray, who's just using his body. I don't think he's too concerned about the puck right now, but he's doing a good job at defending it. As Delaware still managing to hold on to it through some nice effort from guys like Evgeny Demin, who you just saw grab the puck. Delaware and Danville trying to fight for it here on the right-hand side. It eventually comes out. And Delaware going to have some time with it. This one fired out to the point. A shot there from the point is gloved out of the air by Harley White. That one off the stick of Charlie Penns, who scored on a nice slap shot last night. 
That was a good tough shot, but Harley got that big old catcher's mitt out there and was able to make the stop. Face off to the right of Harley White here. 135 left to go in the first period. It started quickly. The first half of it went fast. Second half, not so much. Nick Gullo going to elect to throw this one down. Aaron Taylor tries to get a glove on it. He just examined his glove to make sure there wasn't a hole. That's not me making fun of Aaron. He actually looked at it like that. Oh, and tripped up there. Tripped oh. up hard by Charlie Penns. Nothing called as Nick Gullo trying to push this one in. Penns takes him to the ground and swings with a left in there. Oh, man. No was... hands up, nothing called here. Is Nick Gullo on the ground in front of Aaron Taylor? No, yeah, I think he's going to get the call now. Yep. Yeah, he is. And now we got a little bit of mixing Now up. Charlie Penns and Brad Denny wanting to go ahead it. Former teammates. No love lost there. And we might have a couple other tie-ups here before this game is over. I got a good feeling about that. Is Brad Denny actually going to go to the box now? So we're going to get an official word on how these penalties will be distributed. Danville does have a minute left on the penalty that was pre-existing before this whole scruff. <laughs> but now the captain for Delaware in the box. And it's Charlie Penns Jr. And a big discussion going on over by the boxes. Patrick. Orig originally, I think they were calling a high stick. And then I'm not really sure. You wonder if Brad Denny is going to get an instigation penalty. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. And uh, <laughs> this might. Justin Browson and Pisano kind of leaning on each other while they're waiting for the uh, That would be a match of the heavyweights. I don't think they're going to go at it, but man, wouldn't that be a dream for hockey fans? <laughs> Those are two big bodies. Two big guys, two great guys. I think we're also going to see a penalty here assessed to the goaltender. Did yeah. see the line judge point to the goaltender, Aaron Taylor. Yeah, I think that that was the call there, and then I think the other two uh, go away for roughing. Three on three hockey? Uh, well. Nope. Probably four on four hockey here. <laughs> There's no need to, well. Well, there's already a man in the box for Danville, so they're going to have three no matter what. Unless Brad Denny doesn't have a penalty there, right? Well, I think the two fighting penalties, the roughing penalties will cancel and each other the, out, but I'm not really sure. On, they'll tack on a two-minute minor, probably to Charlie Penns. That would be the thought. I don't really think there was a fight in that, so if that was yeah, a fighting was a penalty, I've got some a discussion questions. discussion penalty. I've seen harder <laughs> fights in women's soccer than that one. Nothing official on the board yet. Direct line not really coming through with anything. We'll update you when we know. As for right now, it's five it's on four. Five on four in favor of Delaware. For another 54 seconds anyway. And they're going to have an opportunity here. Stripped up. Mitch Atkins taking the puck and passing it on to Fred Hine. As Hine dumps he, it to Atkins. As if Atkins hasn't done enough already. Tonight. Atkins to the right side. Scores! Shorty! Mitch Atkins with his second goal. He is having a night. Him and Quintos both putting on a show out here tonight. And Mitch Atkins with a shorty to cash in. Four nothing dashers. I don't know how the Danville Dashers didn't have an even man on there as Charlie Penns was tacked with delay of game. Aaron Taylor was tacked with roughing. Nick, oh, okay, here it is. Brad Denny also just now assigned a penalty on that one for delay of game. Nick Gullo for slashing. That's how. Either way, Danville up 4-0 to zero here after a little bit of a discussion there from <laughs> players, referees, probably even coaches along the boards here. Nonetheless, Delaware still on the penalty or the power play here as this one comes left side to Taylor Cutting. Forced off of it by Barakov. Barakov trying to get a stick on it. It ends up coming out to Nick Gullo. And man, what a hectic first period this has already been. 26 seconds left to go in the first. A wide shot there just to the right. Taylor has to get his blocker up to block Barakov's shot to the right-hand side. <laughs> coming the other way with it, number 86, Brennan Young. Young, it ends up with a point shot there. Coming the other way was Taylor Cutting. He can bury those coming, especially in front of goal as Pisano just unable to keep that one in the zone. Even he strength. Does push it back forward here with about four seconds offside. left to go, and we're going to pull this one back for an offside. 
And that was crazy. The Dashers almost cashed in with a second shorty on the same power play. What a strange turn of events here in the first period as Danville up four to zero. Great coast to coast action for Atkins. He broke up the play in the defensive end then ends up with the shorty on the other end. Mitch Atkins already with two goals and two assists on the night. We have 0.5 seconds left and we're gonna have that face off waved off. And there actually looks like gonna run the clock down. Yep. I don't know why play was blown dead there. Uh, I don't think the clock started on time. That would make sense. There wasn't any time left hardly, about four seconds. So not really missing a whole lot here unless somebody was gonna spontaneously pull their goaltender, <laughs> which I don't think that was probably gonna happen. Four to zero, Danville at the end of the first period as both teams gonna usher themselves off. Quite a bit of a discussion going on out here too. Charlie Penns and Brad Denny still gabbing it up. Both were assessed to lay a game penalties earlier. You kind of wonder how much of that is friendly and how much of it is not. Brad Denny did play less games last season as far as I am aware for Danville than Mr. Charlie Penns did, but an interesting turn of events there as former teammates try and go at it. They weren't allowed to go at it, kind of much to my dismay. I do love to call a good fight, but not a whole lot going on in this game. Not like there's been four goals in the first period or anything. <laughs> we were blanked last night at the end of the first, and now we've got four goals for one team. Yeah, that was a little bit different energy level from the Danville Dashers. And uh, Aaron Taylor, who kind of lost his confidence in the last six minutes last night, continued to be a little shaky in the goal to start tonight. Yeah, you wonder how long his leash is in that goal for Delaware. His backup, Carlson DeMassa, or DeMassa Carlson, doesn't look like there's actually a first name listed Sebastian. Here. Sebastian, a little bit too long to fit in there. <laughs> Sebastian <laughs> DeMassa Carlson has got not great stats on the weekend, to be in all fairness, and not great stats on the season, in all fairness to him. As we're gonna take a look at his, maybe we'll see him a little bit later on. We'll let you know when we do, but for now we expect Aaron Taylor to come out for the second period for Delaware, down four goals after taking a 2-0 lead by the time the third period rolled around last night, and Danville scoring four straight. Now they've scored eight straight. And I'm gonna make the prediction that with it nice and lopsided here that we might see a little bit of chippy play in the second period. Yeah, I would not be very surprised to see that. We've already seen a couple of guys try and go at it, some strong hits. A little bit of slashing from Nick Gullo there in front of goal. A little delay a game. It's gonna be an interesting remainder of the game. We got two periods left and man, I would be lying if I didn't say I think we're gonna see at least one fight. I think you're gonna to get to call at least one fight tonight. Earlier I set the over under for the first fight in the first period. I don't know if we're gonna fight that. Technically there were no fighting penalties assessed. We did have a loud discussion though. So I guess if you took the over we're gonna give this one to you because <laughs> it was not the first period. It will probably be the second period by any and all indications. Before we let you go here for a little bit, we're gonna update you on the scores just one more time. Carolina and Delaware tied up at three now with 19-14 left to go, or gone actually in the second period, about 20 minutes left to go in that game. They're headed towards the third. Danbury tied it up with 19-15 off the clock on a goal from Shane Morrissey that was assisted by Carter Shin Shinkaruk. That's a new one there, actually. We haven't seen them in quite some time, and Danbury really turning it on here as the season goes on. One of the only teams, and the only team to beat Carolina so far, they're tied 3-3 three three in Danbury tonight. The Elmira Enforcers up by a score of 4-2 to two on the Columbus River Dragons heading into the third period. There's a two-goal difference between them and a two-goal difference between the game going on in Watertown. It's Battle Creek up 3-1, 13 minutes done in the second period. So Battle Creek up by a score of 3-1 to one on 23 shots to 17. Willie Dagnault finally scored there to put him up 3-1. to one. They got that extra insurance goal. And in Port Huron, a 5-1 to one score is Port Huron ahead of the men are icebreakers. And of course here in Danville, a 4-0 lead for the Danville Dashers as we head into the second period of Saturday night hockey action here at the David S. Palmer Arena. It's been a hectic one already. Dennis, any thoughts on what we might see? And I have a question. Fight or goal before? 
<laughs> which is going to come first in the second period. I'm going to say there's going to be a fight before there's the fifth goal. Okay, that leaves me the other one. I'll say there's going to be a goal before the fifth fight. Oh, wait, the first fight, technically. Well, the first fight. We had a discussion already. Not quite a fight. It's like Congress. They just yelled at each other for a little bit and didn't get anything done. They didn't get anything done, except they both had to go to the box <laughs> feeling shame. So they got more done. No, we're not going to get into that either way. Seeing some of the costumes here tonight, it is a special night tonight. It's also faith and a cartoon night. A pretty good night here tonight. A lot of fun at the faith family and a cartoon night here Saturday night in downtown Danville, sponsored by Robinson Chiropractic. It's also Toy Story night unofficially, which is why you'll see so many costumes like Woody. Which is why they've said there's no intelligent life up here at the broadcast desk. They tonight. wouldn't be far off, that's for sure. And if you're somehow here tonight and listening to this or coming in the next couple of games, make sure to stop by the Fan HQ on the North Concourse. When you come around, there's a lot of goodies there you can check out. Do a lot of good drawings for stuff here tonight. It's a Toy Story prize basket, so kind of cool. Also coming up February 8th, there will be an exclusive Kids Club skate after the game. Obviously, you have to have your Kids Club membership to get in for that. And Darn. You have to show your card. Yeah, I know. We're out of that. I think I'm too I'm old. Too old for that. Our favorite night coming up here on February 7th. Next week, get your cowboy hats and boots out for the game. Join us for our first country night presented by Vermilion County Fair and B&J Music. We're going to welcome the Vermilion County Farm Bureau that evening. And the first 300 fans will get an orange bandana showing your support for our local farmers. It's been a tough year on them in 2019, hoping for a better 2020. And the team that was hoping for a better 2019-2020 season, the Danville Dashers showing just what kind of offensive firepower they're capable of tonight. They're up four goals to zero here at the end of the first period. We're heading towards the second period. We'll be back in just a little bit.
Welcome back here to the David S. Palmer Arena. Second period of Federal Prospects Hockey League action coming at you hot. The end of the first period saw the Danville Dashers up by a score of four goals to none. Mitch Atkins recording a point on every single one of those goals. He's having a four point night already this evening. The man traded for from the Elmira Enforcers in exchange for a couple of Dashers who actually aren't even in the league at this point anymore, which is a crazy story in itself. Only here in the Federal Prospects Hockey League, we absolutely love it. Mr. Dennis Michelson joining me. I'm Nate Williamson. We're getting ready to drop the puck here in the second period of action. And did we have a goalie change here? It looks like we yes, did. Yes, we have. As we're going to see that is a beautiful helmet. And we have in goal here from Sebastian Damasa Carlson. Does Carlson suffice? <laughs> SDC. SDC, I like it. Yes, yeah, we did see a goalie change. Look at me, I'm calling things. You are really ahead of yourself on this one. I don't just call games, Dennis. I call events. Making big predictions. That didn't actually make any sense now that I think about Making it. Making the big predictions. You're one in a row tonight. I am one in a row. Let's try and keep it that way. I just won't make any more predictions. As Aaron Taylor's four goal period not in a good way. Going to see him get the early hook yeah, out of he, the game here. He wasn't showing any signs of confidence. Gave up an easy uh, stuff shot in the five hole. And speaking of which, tested early maybe will be Carlson. And this one actually won by Danville. Pushed down. Now Delaware has it. Municello fighting for it here as well as Pisano. Oh, bounced off dangerously off of the arm there of Evgeny Demin actually. And this one rolling behind Carlson's net all the way down the left-hand side. Going to try and make a run with it. Number 28, Thomas Municello. Now coming the other way with it. Number 44, Mark Anthony Simonetta. That one comes all to Municello on the left-hand side. That one came off either the bar or the blocker of Harley White. Either way, covered up by the Danville Dashers. Goaltender, a shot from the point here, redirected before it even got past the red circle of the face-off circle. And Delaware showing some nice puck possession here early on in the first period. Danville fighting for it now through Barakov is over there lying pressure. Simonetta's gonna be flagged for offside here. I think Taylor cutting in on that as well. Actually scratch that, that was Thomas Municello on the left-hand side. Yeah, and I think they're gonna send this one down a ways because they didn't like how he, um... no, I guess not. I would, thought they were pointing to center ice there for a minute. Oh! Oh, we now got a little discussion along the boards. Looks like Fred Hine. Fred Hine having a little word. Not sure if he was talking to the referee or talking to Clark there on the bench. Yeah, I think he's talking to Clark. Yeah, he's now still he talking to Clark there. Friendly now he little comes pat on the other side. As they, uh, break it up. Could be interesting. Face off right here in front of us, and that one's won by Delaware. Push back to the left defenseman to Cristofaro. We are pending on information as whether he's related to the to Cristofaro that used to play for the Danville Dashers. I have heard cousin, we'll see. A shot from the point here, bounces dangerously. Oh, nice. White had to swallow that one up, bouncing harder than a skill stick ball. Nice play by Harley White. That, that puck was taking a very uh, indirect route towards his goal. Fought it off and made a really nice stop. Eighteen fifty-five left here in the second period. Just getting underway with second period action from the David S. Palmer Arena. McIntosh stick tied up there with Zalak. Now coming the other way with it is Hoggood. Hoggood passes it out. It's turned over. Now it's over to Murray in the right-hand corner here. Danville Dasher is now going left to right, of course, as that one slung down by Murray. Up and around the boards, it comes all the way to Quintos as he's picked off there by Charlie Penns Jr. And Quintos on it now, coming the other way with it. As he had an opportunity there, ends up with a little bit of open ice, picks out a pass, dangerous bounce there. Fred Hine right in front of you. the new defender, Carlson. Still wanted to yell Aaron Taylor on that one. Trying to jam it home, and again, Tyler Quintos, the playmaker. Just a plethora of weird bounces on that one as well. Having a very, very solid game tonight here. Uh, just has created just about every opportunity that the Dashers have cashed in on. And we're gonna have a face off here to the left side of Carlson. 
Once again, Sebastian Carlson, Dem or Demasa Carlson, coming in relief of Aaron Taylor. Bodies hitting the floor here in front of his goal, and coming the other way is Eric Masters. Masters with a fake clearance there. Don't know if he meant to do that one specifically. Either way, it comes all the way back behind Harley White, who has to get back quick. Coming the other way now, Delaware. Nice shot there, a wraparound. John Doherty, who's been probably the most threatening Thunder player so far tonight, despite being written in a lineup sheet tonight for the one of the first few times here for Delaware. Foot pass there, unable to be collected by Delaware. Brad Denny eventually gets it back. Danville's own number nine, Brett Menton, fires it down the ice. Going to come all the way back down here. Carlson asking for an icing, and it is an icing. 17.43 left to go here in the second period. That puck somehow made it all the way back down to Harley White. He tried to pick it up with his stick. Couldn't quite get it up. Coming to the left side of White now. One by Delaware in on the faceoff there was Brian Dunford. This one all the way back to White as it comes over to Fred Hine. Hine pushes it along the boards, not really to anyone, and this one's gonna come back for an icing as well as Delaware clearly the first players to get there. Charlie Penn's able to get there. The only one even close was A.J. Tesserero, and even he was still back at the blue line. Faceoff coming back to the right-hand side here of Aaron, or Harley White. As that one won by Danville and pushed along by Menton. Trying to play down the left-hand side here is Danville. This one played up in the air. Fred Hine gonna come eventually with it. One on two, a long shot there. Off the blocker of Carlson and swallowed up, but only for a moment here is that one blown dead. I asked Coach about his newest defenseman, Brett Menton. He said he's got good mitts. He says he's only had a couple of practices and now a game under his belt. And he was very uh, happy with how his game developed from the start to the finish of the game last night. It is interesting to see how guys come in and gel early on as that slap shot off the faceoff covered up there by Carlson. And Menton acquired very recently here, the most recent addition for the Stanville Dasher squad has played with a plethora of teams so far this year. He's got five teams under his belt, including the Danville Dashers. He was on the Carolina squad for two games last year, as he only got two games, and career total in the FPHL, five points. That's Brett Menton, the newest addition for the Danville Dashers. And Danville able to turn this one over a couple of times here. Some sloppy passing, doesn't really affect anyone as Lidke grabs it. He's played into the boards there by Browsen. Now coming the other way with it is Delaware. Coming down the right-hand side. Danville turns it over and gets it back. Stretch pass here out to Browsen, a four on one. They've got him boxed in. It'll be interesting, he gets out of it over to Armstrong. Armstrong back to Browsen. Armstrong played into the boards though. Delaware gonna try and run the other way with it. Instead it's pushed down behind Carlson here as it's picked up by Litke. Litke over to Cutting. Cutting to Demit, Demin. This one down the right-hand side here to Armstrong. Actually, that was Barakov out there with Mitch Atkins. That main effective line out there right now for Danville. And this one won by Delaware. They're gonna be the next ones to threaten here. Evgeny Demin coming down the left-hand side. Open space, a shot up and high as Harley White grabs that one out of the air with a glove. Very confident save by Harley White. Saw it all the way. It was a pretty good shot. 16.09 left to go here in the second period. 4-0 Danville on the scoreboard. Not exactly the start you'd want if you're the Delaware Thunder, although played tough last night. We'll see if they can start the offensive side here later on into the second period. They are putting a little bit of pressure on here early. Just unable to string anything conclusive through as this one's coming all the way out. A shot from the point wide right of White. Try saying that sometimes fast. Comes all the way back here to Kieran Devine. Devine throws it through and now back over to Municello. Municello gets past a man, can't get past the second. It comes back to Evgeny Demin after redirect. Oh, that one high up off the glass there. A matter of inches when you play with fire like that. Now Barakov applying pressure. This one comes to Nayer, a pass open, almost bounced in by Delaware Sticks actually in the end, but safe away from Carlson. And Clarkie gets a big hit there into the side as Clark goes in. Now Murray coming around the other side. That one comes all the way to Demin. 
Demin playing with it on the boards, unable to keep it though, as Danville gonna try and run the other way with it. Two down the left-hand side. A shift change, the actual goal here, as that one's covered up by Carlson securely. You know, the second period, long, long switches to your defensive end. So anytime you get a chance to, to dump and get a fresh set of legs out there, you're gonna take that advantage. Yeah, you gotta give what you're given to. In all credit, five minutes into the second period, haven't seen anything abhorrous from Carlson. When you, especially when you consider Aaron Taylor had a goal let in on him about 30 seconds into the game. <laughs> yeah, no fights, no goals yet here in the second. Nope. That yeah, one they... played offside there as Menton looked a little bit confused as to what would be the best way to play that. As it just gets over the blue line after the stick handle and we're gonna have an offsides call coming right back here. I think he was concerned about Delaware getting numbers so uh, taking the face off is, uh, was a better alternative there. Well, a good heads up play there by Menton as that face off won by Delaware. Masters ended up with it. He throws it down the ice here and it's actually gonna come all the way to McIntosh. McIntosh gives it up to John Doherty who's threatening. He's coming in a hard shot there off the blocker of Harley White. Doherty firing it off the back end of the net there as that one was caught up in and White gets back there and freezes it up as Eric Masters was right in on it. Happy birthday to Eric Masters, by the way. His birthday, the former Danville Dasher, great guy, heck of a cool story if you ever get the chance to look at it. Got to talk to him a few times last season. Another guy we talked to a lot, Charlie Pence, fires a slapper, that one came all the way through and got off the blocker there of White. As Danville looking to go the other way with a nice hand eye there by Fred Hine. Who would have thought that? Oh, everyone. As he fires that one <laughs> to the left hand side to Quintos. Quintos looking for Zalac. Oh. Nobody home though as Charlie Penns ends up with it. He's going to carry it down the right hand side here at least for a moment. Alexa slap it down. That one's going to bounce off pretty dangerously there behind Harley White. Oh, as a white over. pass unable to get to Denny. Denny doing a good job at holding him off though, boxing him out as it looked like McIntosh would be threatening on that. Instead, it's Danville going the other way with it. Zalak over to Menton. Menton back to Zalak. Zalak with a nice shot high. It goes oh. just up and padded over by Carlson. Had him beat, but the shot went high. Coming the other way with it, a hard slap shot there by Brian Dunford as this one's gonna wrap around the boards. Eric Masters almost gets a stick on the puck. He does, pokes it down. He's gonna get a shift change here while he's in the far puck. That one came all the way out and over the glass. And we're gonna have a face off here, probably pretty close to where we are on the blue line. I think we're gonna see the face off in the dashers in. It looks like it's gonna come all the way back as we're gonna get another puck. We get another puck, we're ready to go. Face off will be to the right of Harley White. They should play on the left for him all the time so I don't have to say that tongue twister. <laughs> face off blown dead by the line judge well behind the play as Tessarero sent off. Just tried to get a little bit too eager on that one. Face off one by Delaware. Pisano on it now. Oh, Pisano a shot from the wide. That one was hard and off the boards as Browson throws this one off the boards as well to Tessarero. Tessarero coming down the other eye and here it's Menton, or Nick Gullo on the other end. The Energizer Bunny throws a man into the boards there. It was Devine getting pressured as Browson able to get his stick in there and get this one back. It does a nice job to keep it on side here. Fires one on to Carlson. That one was open in front of the net. It doesn't come off to anybody on the dashers wearing black though. Delaware gets out of a bruiser there with Charlie Penns coming the other way. Tessarero almost getting the, the, the jam shot there. Yeah, we're gonna see a penalty hit. here, a big hit laid. And that one came on Ryan Kerr. Yep. And gonna go to the box is Nick Gullo. And by the sound of how that hit the board, you would not have thought Nick Gullo laid that hit when you look at him, but he really can pack a punch. Yeah, I think he got the uh, Delaware player off balance as well, and he went down hard and into the boards, but he's okay. And Delaware not without opportunities here as we are seeing another serve pro penalty kill here in the second period, 13.09 left to go in the second period. A game that's going by fairly quickly, I would say, knock on wood. Haven't had a whole lot of stoppages, certainly not as many as we expect. Danville, short-handed opportunity here, going the other way with it is Jesse Nayer. He likes his chances, takes them well, and gets onto it. Hitting the deck there, Pisano. Nayer on it now, trying to fight for it against three Delaware Thunder players. Nayer still with it, finally stripped as he was tripped up a little bit there by Demin. Oh yeah, coach wanted a call on that one. And Nayer gets a shift change as Barakov comes off nicely in exchange. And Barakov, the first player to touch this one. Ooh, a big, big hit, hit into the boards there by Anthony Pisano. This one out to Municello, over to Penns. Penns 
fires a shot wide right of Harley White. And Pizzano's a big kid. And this one coming back here to DeMinn. Front four by Danville. We'll see if they can push the tempo here. It's going to come all the way back to Charlie Penns. 114 left to go on the power play. 1221 left to go in the second period. 4 to 0 Danville as Municello grabs this one behind the net and passes it over to Charlie Pence. Those two will put on a long shift in the end of this one. Off the glove hard of Taylor Cutting there. He shook that one off. Tough guy. <laughs> we know that from several occasions. That one played by Danville, shot all the way down the ice. Actually ends up hitting Paul Jean, the head official, as he shakes that one off too. Talk about tough guys. You know, hockey players have to be tough. Hockey referees have to be even tougher. Oh, an opportunity there for Delaware. Just nobody home as the open pass did find open net on the left-hand side. Instead, Danville coming the other way with it through Seth Ensor. Ensor with a fake shot. A backwards pass to Zalak. Zalak is in off the bar. And that one hit the side post. Zalak with a crafty move there off of a beauty of a pass from Seth Ensor. Almost another shorty for Danville. 16 seconds left to go on the serve pro penalty kill. 11.20 left to go in the second period as this one's rounded up by Delaware. Young on it now. Young down the right-hand side. He's got cutting with him. Young elects to take it himself. Loses it. Atkins coming the other way with it now. Mitch Atkins very active on both the offensive and defensive end tonight. Nick Gullo out of the box here. A big hit laid there by Patrick Zalak who's gonna come off the ice and get a shift change as well as Brad Denny picks this one up. And we're back to even strength for Danville as Nick Gullo, you saw him come out of the box. Starting to get those big resonating sound hits here at the David S. Palmer Arena. And in front of a good crowd, you know they're gonna like to see that. We'll see if it has any lasting effect on the game. Last night we saw a couple of them at about this same time period. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Mitch Atkins down the right-hand side, no doubt looking for his fifth point as he's played into the boards. It ends up behind him and Pisano, no one quite knowing where it was. Luckily for Delaware coming the other way with it and they are ready for it. Applying nice pressure there was John Doherty. He throws this one out and it's nicely dealt with by Danville. Have it delayed offside here. And this one's gonna be blown for icing actually. And getting a little more of a discussion here. And now Fred Hine comes over and uh, makes sure that the discussion ends. He sure was ready to talk a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever seen Fred actually drop the gloves. He very rarely, to this point, has ever gotten into arguments either. So it's kind of interesting to watch, at least from our perspective. I can't speak on a whole lot of the guys from the Delaware Thunder, a lot of them new to the league. But the ones that we have seen, we know will drop them. Taylor Cutting, obviously, a big one there. We love to watch him fight. Clark, a point shot. That one's high. Almost wrapped around and brushed out there. White had his hands full trying to deal with that one as Delaware almost pulls one back here. Danville coming the other way with it now. Fred Hine pulls it back to avoid the offside. Danville able to recollect, and that one comes all the way down to Jordan Clark. A long stretch pass here. Ends up finding Doherty, who finds a man down the right-hand seam, Brian Dunford. Dunford, a shot swallowed up by Harley White, and this one's going to come back for a face-off with 9.51 left to go in the second period. Another good job by Harley White. Again, no traffic in front of the net. Got a good look at it, and a good, solid save. Gets us to our media timeout, Nate. Make the easy save, and the hard one will just come naturally down the end here. It'll be interesting to see as this second period does go on how Coach Ray Tremblay elects to play this one. You know, you got a deep roster. You got guys that are actually healthy scratches for the night or off the roster just due to the transitioning and getting back. You guys still got guys like Chris Affinati on the other end that'll come in and fill in for you. It'll be interesting to see if we do see some of the third and fourth liners get some more time here. Um, guys like Levi Armstrong, you might see him a little bit more out there on the ice. Maybe a little bit more of your backup defensemen get their feet under them. And honestly, I got to say, not a whole lot of backups on this team. There's a lot of good players on this team. That's good, good solid, Very good, solid roster. Here's one interesting thing that I've noticed. You know, we're getting to see Sam Turner on the defensive side. Coach said he actually likes him a little bit better on the defensive end than he does as a forward. Not something that he expected at the beginning of the year, but he loves having these versatile players that can go either way. And Sam Turner, another guy that he described as having good mitts. That was the, the key word of the day for Coach. 
Well, it's sure to be an interesting end of the second period here in Saturday night action at the David S. Palmer Arena as A.J. Tesserero has been thrown off of another faceoff. Also had a chance to talk to Ben Bucal. He's about three weeks away from being back. Well, we eagerly await seeing the bearded Ben Bucal back on there as Delaware gonna have an opportunity here from the right-hand side. That one well wide of the goal of Harley White. Getting now to Min. Demin wraps around, gonna try and shove this one home. Instead elects to fake it and pull it back. Demin now coming back the other way. Hands it off here behind the net. Some nice build up here from Delaware. Demin with a shot. And Harley White does just enough to deal with that one. Don't know what actually ever even got there as Tesserero was the one in on the coverage. Played hard into the boards there was Troy Murray. Danville coming the other way with it. Tripped up on the glass, or on the post actually there was Tesserero, but a big hit from a stickless Justin Browse and does just enough and he gets a foot on that one and also takes out one of the Delaware players there and a little bit of a shout there but Justin Browse doing his best. Victor Lindelof impressed impersonation here playing a little soccer out there on the ice. That's my favorite soccer player. <laughs> he also could have played professional hockey, fun fact. So that's why that is appropriate. I like it, I like it. We're gonna come all the way back for a face off here on the left side of Harley White. Seeming like Delaware getting their fair share and more of time here in the Danville Dashers defensive zone as they win yet another face off. That one was poured on to White from the right side. It was wide of him though. Another wide shot there, a shot's on goal. Few and far between, and we're gonna actually see a penalty on Danville. That's coming against Justin Browsen, it looked uh -oh, like. Actually, stick. Tesserero gonna make his way over there. Referee did point at Justin Browsen initially, but he was pointing through such a large man. As Tesserero goes to the sin bin, and we're gonna have another uh, serve pro penalty kill here with about 8.45 left to go in the second period. A little bit more penalty action here so far tonight. And we're looking at 8.29 on the time slot, 8.45 left to go. We're almost on point with the time on the clock and the time on the game clock. So there's a fun fact for you. That one won by Delaware is they're gonna have plenty of time here to make something out of this power play. If they could pull one back here, you like their chances a lot more of getting a couple more as pens from the point. Fires one on the nice pass there to Municello. Municello across the right-hand side, a nice play there by Quintos to break up the action. Scores points, breaks up passes. What can't this man do? He's had a big, big game tonight. Clearly your number one star at this point. No complaint from me. Mitch Atkins does have four points though on the evening. Mitch Atkins the number two star without a doubt. Those are the, have been the two best players tonight for the Dashers. And this one coming the other way here is Jesse Nair. Nair might have an opportunity here. It's a two on one. Nair derobed there by Charlie Penns with a nice defensive effort with the stick. Coming the other way with a Delaware. Mark Anthony Simonetta coming down the left hand side here. That one makes it all the way through to White. A heads up play there to send it down the ice to DeCristofaro. It's going to be the first Delaware player back to it. Danville able to get a shift change courtesy of Harley White's actions. Litke out there now with it for Delaware. Barakov laying chase, he backs up and Litke comes forward. Now coming the other way with it, McIntosh down the left-hand side. He throws a long one down there onto Taylor, or White, and White scoops it up. Still so odd, I just equate Aaron Taylor being a Danville Dasher instead of a Delaware Thunder player. It's an odd feeling. Harley White has been so solid in net tonight. There hasn't been a single time that he's been challenged that he hasn't been up to the task. And a blank slate on the score sheet to prove it. It's four to zero Danville here with 7.20 left to go in the second period as this one comes all the way back around to Carlson who hasn't had a whole lot of testing being done other than maybe one or two plays here. Had some help from the sidebar in an earlier play. Nick Gullo Ooh. gets checked up there by Young and loses his stick. This one comes out to the point of Taylor cutting. A big oh. hit there from Logan Hoggood in behind the play as he was clearing the net from number 86, Brennan Young. A nice stop there at the point of shot in. It bounces around and it comes out. Gullo gonna be the next one to it as we have zero seconds left to go and we're back to full strength. We'll see if they pull uh, him I back. Nope, they will a, not. Yeah, I think the puck was played with a high stick, I believe. 
Looks like it as it's going to be a face off to the right of Carlson. And back to full strength here. The serve pro penalty kill killed off by the Danville Dashers. That wasn't even really a lot of threat there for a goal for Delaware. Good job on the PK for the Dashers. This one comes out to the point and leaks past the blue line before the Dashers can get to it. Brad Denny throws one through. Very narrowly onside there. It ended up with a delayed offside anyway. As to coming the other way now is Ryan Kerr. Kerr's on it now here down the right-hand side. Got three Danville Dashers in hot pursuit. He gets it down there to the corner. A shot that's wide right of Harley White. A shot from Clarky in the paint. And that one goes over to Kerr. Another shot from the point here, and that one redirected off the stick of Harley White now to play. Probably one of the better opportunities to score there coming off the stick of Jordan Clark. Just couldn't quite get the redirect on it as Delaware still down by a four spot here about late in the second period. Good puck movement from Delaware. Got the Dashers defense sort of out of sorts and got themselves an opportunity, but once again, couldn't beat the man between the pipes. Harley White having a real solid game. And we and got a fight. Go. Charlie Penns and Levi Armstrong. I got one half of the first fight correct here. I thought it would be Taylor Cutting. Nonetheless, two former teammates going at it. Charlie Penns, Levi Armstrong gets a right hand in there. Penns lands a left, Levi Armstrong lands a left. Grappling in here, he's got him by the shirt, a right hand swing. Penns' his helmet is off, Armstrong's going to town. Levi Armstrong lands a solid three hitter there as they're wrapped up. Armstrong with a large right hand, another one. Throwing it in as Penns is out for the count. Still standing though, Charlie Penns pulled away, red faced and frustrated. Levi Armstrong on the win. And they're gonna make nice after that one. Two guys going at it that worked together a lot last season. Two fan favorites here in Danville. Levi Armstrong, no doubt, getting the better of that one. And we're hoping no injury there for Charlie Penns. Looks like he's gonna shake it off just fine. Super tough guy. Missed a pretty good part of the season last season with some leg injuries and battled back. Scored a goal last night, kudos to him. Even on the other team, still giving Danville fans a show. And Levi getting a lot of fist uh, pumps from the uh, kids as he's getting uh, organized down there in the penalty box. He saw Charlie Penns there in the penalty box looking over at Levi and simulating the Rocky Balboa hand circle. Funny guys, they got some good personality, a good scrap there. Much to the surprise and excitement of the Dashers crowd. And we got the fight before the fifth goal. We did, that's true. So I'm one for one tonight. And I'm one for two. <laughs> Ensor fires one from the shot there. Danville kind of threatening right off of the bat here. And I actually have a feeling Delaware is probably gonna miss Charlie Penns' is present out there on the defensive side quite a decent bit. Plays Big a lot of time. time as the captain, but maybe worth it here down four anyway. Patrick Zalak on it now. Danville with some nice connecting passes here as Fred Hine has it. Hine over to the left-hand side here for Hoggood. Actually, Sam Turner is that one scooped up. And a nice glove there from Sebastian Carlson, or Damasa Carlson. For some reason, I keep wanting to put those two the other way around. Yep, Charlie Penns Jr. is a nice guy to have off the ice for a while if you're a Dashers fan, because he's very active on both the offensive and defensive ends. Very solid defenseman for this club. Especially if you're the likes of Mitch Atkins and Tyler Quintos, who are both looking for a hat trick. They sit with two goals. Mitch Atkins, two goals, two assists on the night. And a dominating performance here so far for Danville. But Delaware not down and out of this one just yet here in prime time on Saturday night. Forgot to bring my hat to throw on the ice tonight. Oh. Tessarero down the right-hand side here. He's got a shot on goal as Carlson. That pops out of his glove. Just doing enough maybe to throw that one off. Anthony Pisano hit the ice as a payment. Municello coming down the left-hand wing. Tries to pick a pass. It's intercepted firmly by Danville. Nick Gullo ending up with it here down the left-hand side. Gullo over to Hoggood. Hoggood all the way across the ice to Browsen. Browsen flips this one up looking for Hoggood. He finds him off the board. Hoggood across the ice here. Tessarero in, open, a backhanded shot. Carlson unable to grab it. It's floating around dangerously in front of the blue zone. And instead, no harm, no foul as Hoggood picks it up and throws it along the boards here to Barakov. All the way out across and up off the boards to Murray, who's going to have to deal with that one. He does well. Now coming the other way with it. Danville on the open side. Hoggood. Oh, nice and that one play. off the chest pad of Sebastian Damasa Carlson. 
Good shot for Hoggett, but uh, Carlson up to the task. And well, we're gonna be right back into it here on the left-hand side of Damasa Carlson. As we see a puck drop, Mitch Atkins loses out to McIntosh. Clark fires this one around the boards all the way up to Masters. Taken back by Menton and an offside. Actually tipped up and out of play. Sorry, I don't know what I was looking at. Clearly not the game. And since it went off a Delaware stick, the faceoff will be on the far side of Carlson. And this one coming back now as Delaware wins it out. No harm, no foul on that one. Coming the other way with it was Doherty. Almost turns it over there as Brad Denny eventually going to get on the other end of this one. On the other end of it, Menton. Menton and Denny, a nice defensive duo so far here tonight as that one ricocheted off the stick. The hard landing there. Looks like he's okay. On the other end of it, that was Brett Menton. Very aggressive into the offensive end, charging towards the goal, hoping for a loose puck, then kind of lost an edge, and down he went. He's done a really good job so far this weekend in his first home stand as a dasher. Seeing more of a chemistry between him and Brad Denny tonight than we saw last night, so they're quickly getting the hang of playing his defensive partners here. Yeah, no doubt. This one coming the other way now. Delaware going to try and play with it. It was John Doherty who was on it. Doherty going to find himself on the right-hand wing here, Denny intercepts. And Danville gonna look to break down the right-hand side, left-hand side, there's a lack over there. Fred Hine has it now. Hine tries to throw one through. It's eventually gonna get to Denny who drops it off. Looks like Delaware might pick this one up. Instead, it's the lack that gets it. The lack on it, up and in! Patrick Zalak, what a beauty! Nice creative play. Grabbed the puck, skated towards the net, fired it home, and it's five nothing dashes. What a beauty going far and upper net down there from Patrick Zalak. Surprised that one didn't ring the Gatorade bottle there of Sebastian Damasa Carlson. Carlson didn't have a chance on that shot. That was a pretty play by Zalak. And man, five to zero here for Danville in Saturday night action. 325 left to go in the second period. This one turning into a, well, let's just say not a barn burner, Dennis. This is the way I like him at home for the Dashers. Nice, comfortable lead. Taylor cutting through a nice pass there to Young. Instead, it was picked off and going the other way. Danville with it now behind their own net. Up into the air and down behind as this one comes all the way out to Bryce Litke. Over to Cutting, who throws it down. It's only going to find Seth Ensor, though, as he tries to throw it up to Gullo. Gullo back to Ensor. Ensor floats behind his net. Backwards on his heels. Taylor Cutting there saying hello to Harley White. Grabbing oh. his stick, a little bit of a push there. <laughs> Harley White with a little slash there. Doesn't like the big man Taylor Cutting kind of laying in his way. Yeah, we're going to see a little chippy action here now with this up five, with the dashes up 5 nothing. With a whole third period left to go, it'll be interesting. Delaware going to have to get back on side here as Danville gets it anyway and comes down the left-hand side. Come the other way, Turner. Turner on it now. It's got Tessarero. Turner to Tessarero. Ooh, just wide left of Carlson. Play. That was beautifully set up by Turner. Now you can see why it was so valuable to bring him in last year and to have him back from injury here in the middle part of the season. Oh, a long stretch pass of beauty there to Cutting. Cutting going to find himself one-on-one. -on -one. Nice, nice defensive effort there by Danville. In on the stick check. Hoggood coming up with that play. Hoggood and Seth Ensel were the defensive pairing that was out there at the time. As Danville now skating, they're going to have a two-on-one opportunity. Wrapped around a shot off the right blocker and behind the net. We're going to have a stoppage here. I think the net came off and pulled the post. Yeah, that was Mitch Atkins trying to get the old hat trick there, hoping the puck would come loose, but the net came loose before the puck did. Well, Tyler Quintos really doing his best to pull even with points with Mitch Atkins here, as he has three after getting the assist on that last goal. Atkins still in there with four. 
as we see a face off here as Carlson gets resituated. Two very nice acquisitions for the Dashers and both players coincidentally had played with Fred Hine previously in their careers. Makes sense. Coming down the ice now here is Danville threatening in their offensive zone. Delaware trying to do what they can to clear it. Comes over to Atkins. Atkins with a fake to get it off the boards here. Dumps it back to Hoggood. Hoggood dumps it in and around the boards. And comes up over into the corner. Fought for here by Atkins along with number 15, Bryce Litke. Over to, oh, a dangerous play there by Harley White, who does eventually get it cleared. No time too soon here as Danville looking threatening, but Delaware looking to strike back here. Got to think it would be nice if Delaware could get at least one goal, give them a little momentum going into the break, something to feel good about. But with one minute left to go here in the second period, it doesn't look too promising for the Delaware Thunder. Dashers swarming the net again. Jesse Nayer on it now. He completes the full 360 and brings it back around into open ice. He's got a little space there. That one popped up and out of play oh, off oh, the oh. rafter there at the top of the arena. 39.2 left to go here, and Charlie Penns Jr. and Levi Armstrong gonna get a nice round of applause for this one and head back off to their benches. Good set of stick taps there for Levi as he comes back out. Yeah, it was a great fight from Levi, a really good scrap there against Penns. Penn's not somebody I can recall ever seeing drop the gloves, but certainly didn't look out of place in that fight. Especially not with Levi Armstrong. Man, can he swing? And Litke dumps this one out here. We're going to be coming the other way through Eric Masters. On and now McIntosh fires it in there, and Harley White going to just have to glove this one and freeze it with 28 left to go here in the second period. Levi's the perfect player for that tough guy role on this team, but he's more than just a pugilist now. He's getting quite a creative offensive game as well, and he plays pretty good defense as well. So good solid all-around efforts by Levi, but still not afraid to scrap. My coaches always used to tell me, you do whatever you can to stay on the ice for as long as you can. That's what Levi Armstrong does, I think it's safe to say. McIntosh on this one now. He plays it back around. He's looking for Pisano. Instead, it comes back around off the ice. Fred Hine going to look to run with this one. Gets it back, shoots it across here. Oh, and Quintos almost jumping on that one. Carlson having to freeze it late there as he thought he had a little bit. Quintos maybe getting a little warning there from McIntosh not to stick his stick in. Oh, we got to fight along the boards. The gloves are off, and wow, one pair of gloves off. Pisano is going to be out of this game. As I don't know who that is down on the ground. Fred Hine into it now as he hit the ground hard. Pisano dropped his gloves without warning. Not a great look there from Anthony Pisano, number 33, down big on the goal scoring Fred Hine, the lead goal scorer for Danville, who didn't have a shot. Zalak was also involved, and he is really irritated right now. We'll see if they even give Pisano the benefit of going to the penalty box. I'm not sure they will. Yeah. And Zalak in the box, he pounds the glass. He is angry. I'm just worried that Fred Hine might have been the third man in on that fight. According to the officials, I'm a little bit concerned about them sending him home, but nope, there goes Pisano. Pisano into the box. That's going to be a game misconduct and an ejection as Fred Hine, Patrick Zalak in the box. Zalak doesn't look too happy, chewing on his mouth guard there. And we're going to see what the official penalty tallies here are. There were four seconds left to go in the second <laughs> period, Dennis. We just had to get through four seconds. And Anthony Pisano flipped a lid and then also flipped the lid of Fred Hine. Well, he originally jumped Zalak. Then he flipped three lids. Then he went after Fred. So, so we're going to go with he flipped three lids. Yep, there was, uh, that got pretty ugly pretty quick. And Zalak scoring the most recent goal, maybe talking a little smack. You do kind of wonder what sets that off in a situation similar to that, but man. <laughs> oh, buddy, four seconds left to go in the second period. Anthony Pisano has There's been some, ejected. Some jawing going on Ooh. there between the benches, too. What is even going on this weekend, Dennis? Gordachuk getting into it. Goalie fight. Oh, wait, he's on the bench. Doesn't count. He's on the bench, John, with everybody on the other team. 
Man, what is going on here at the David S. Palmer Arena? If you tuned in for this one, congrats. You tuned in for a wild ride. Uh -oh. Despite being down five goals, Delaware <laughs> probably giving us the show we all deserve here. As Charlie Penns was in a fight earlier, he's getting the word now on what the official call is gonna be. I think this one's gonna take some deliberation. Looks like Paul Jean is actually talking to the Dasher bench, maybe to get a better idea of what happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about them sending Fred Hine off or Zalak off. I think if they were gonna send him off, more likely than not, they probably would have done it already. They look yeah. pretty calm. I don't know, Fred Hine actually coming back to the bench. No, that's Patrick Zalak, sorry. Fred Hine's still in the box there. Yeah, I, that's a very un, unusual circumstance. I guess he wasn't really the third man in on the fight so much as... Zalak taken out of the box and back Pizano to the bench. Was, Pizano was going after everybody. Yeah, he was kind of on a tear there. Not a great look there. I don't understand how Zalak didn't get a penalty, though. Maybe self-defense? Is this a uh, court of law? <laughs> Is that how this is going to be tonight? We need, like, law and order, you know. We need to get a uh, correspondent on the phone. Let me call my connection from law school. Law and order federal league version, you know. Law and order, FPHL. Com com coming to NBC. Dun, dun. In 2020. <laughs> yeah, like law and order, typical <laughs> intro music. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what is going on here? We're off track, but that's only because this entire game seems to be derailed. We have one penalty on the board. It's Fred Hines, two minutes. Probably third man in, I would assume. Third man in is usually Technically an ejection, ejection, right? But a five minute major on the board for Delaware right now. That one going to Anthony Pisano, who's been ejected. So what we'll have here, if stays the, how it is right now, is two minutes of five on, or four on four, and then a whole three minutes of Dasher's power play coming up after the four seconds that we had left to get through and the 20 minutes of intermission that could have probably solved the whole problem. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we're still getting a discussion. And I would imagine we'll see who's gonna be sent to the box. It's gonna be Ryan Kerr sent to the box in place of Pisano. You do, uh, I saw them start to move off and I wondered if we were just gonna play an extra four seconds or something maybe. I wouldn't have been surprised with something like that that saw an ejection. Fred Hines' official penalty is for roughing. Yeah, that, I guess that makes sense. That holds water. I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. Even a leaky boat holds water every once in a while. Very confusing turn of events, but we're gonna have a nice intermission to figure it all out soon. Woo! End of two here. Danville up five to zero after Patrick Zalak's goal. And we're in for a wild ride in the third period. Harley White doing a great job back there for the Dashers currently going in. Knock on the wood for him because I don't want to curse a goaltender. They'll come at you. Very superstitious people with a clean sheet right now. Nice clean sheet and it, it's been a well-earned shutout to this point. He's had some tough stops to make and has been up to the task all night long. And man, it's been a crazy night so far in the FP. A couple really close games going on. And wow, no longer a close game in Danbury. Seeing for the first time here, seven to four Danbury now after being tied not long ago. There's two and a half left to go in the game. And they're up by a score of seven to four now with two goals on the night, Shane Morrissey and Casper Dearson with three assists on the night for Carolina. Daniel Klinecki and a plethora of goals in that one. A lot of goals in a couple of other games. Elmira up six to three over the River Dragons. Port Huron up eight to one over Menor. And Watertown and Battle Creek currently tied at three with just over a minute and a half left to go in the third period. That's gonna be a fun one. There was just recently a penalty for head contact assessed to Corey Sherman. Well, that's <laughs> interesting. And of course, right here at the David S. Palmer Arena, five to zero, the Danville Dashers beating the Delaware Thunder in a crazy turn of events from what we saw last night, which was a hotly contested game for a majority of the game until Danville roared back and scored four straight to win four to two. Now, they're up 5-0, heading into the third period in a pretty quick game until the last two minutes or so. Warm-ups this evening really 
said a lot about what we're gonna see from the Danville squad tonight. They had a whole different level of intensity during their pre-game skate than they did last night. And they came out and just took it to Delaware tonight. It's been a, from start to finish, Danville Dashers have dominated this game so completely and also cashing in with lots of goals. So, and they won the fight too. Yeah, they did a good fight there. A nice scrap. Charlie Pence Jr. Still putting on a show for the Danville crowd alongside Levi Armstrong there. That was a good scrap. I know Levi's family is uncle watching on the live stream here tonight. So a hello to the Armstrong family. I'm expecting a uh, rematch too in the third period. We had an announcement from Cam. I don't know what the announcement was. Yep. I am predicting a uh, Levi Armstrong, Charlie Pence Jr. rematch in the third period. I wonder, I I, I don't know. It'll I'll be stick interesting. stick my neck out on this prediction. Hey, you would be two for two if it goes correctly, <laughs> so why not? 500's a great batting average, Dennis. It's not a great save percentage, though. No. <laughs> it, it, that's, that's about the save percentage that Aaron Taylor had tonight before he was sent home after that first period. Yeah, a rough going for Aaron Taylor tonight. He's been replaced by Sebastian Damasa Carlton. So far, let's compare the two after they were kind of switched out here. Aaron Taylor had 19 shots against. He let up four goals, so .789. Can't get any more perfect number-wise than that save percentage. Also had two penalty minutes, just not a good look for him. Damasa Carlson gonna play the full 40 of the rest here. One goal against, 12 shots. So pretty well done by Damasa Carlson so far tonight. We'll see how he holds up here in the third period. Now De Delaware down another man as we saw Anthony Pisano ejected. The official ruling on that did come in. We'll get it for you here in one second. He's Before. large enough to be counted as two human beings. Yeah, and he makes an impact as well. Starter here tonight for Delaware in the defensive role. Also a pretty solid offensive player coming through. He was charged with a 10 minute game misconduct, a five minute major for fighting, a five for fighting if you will, if you prefer the band. And just a very, very interesting turn of events for him. He has played in five games so far for Delaware. Two points on the Young's season for him. And kind of funny, he's been around the FHL longer than I actually even realized, but in all fairness, he hasn't been here when I've been here. So he played last back in 2015 and 16 for Danbury, who were at that time the Whalers, I do believe. He played in 2012 and 13 for them, 11 and 12 for them, and then 2011 and 2012 for the Delaware Thunder. So fun fact for you on the night. Well, with that being said, a hectic second period, only one goal coming out of it though. So interesting how that works out. It was the goal from Patrick Zalak, went bar down and upper net down and beat uh, Sebastian Damasa Carlson here as he was in relief of Aaron Taylor. We'll see how the third period goes. We're gonna take a long break on this intermission because I think it's gonna be a wild third period in a hectic night here at the David S. Palmer Arena. We'll be back for you in just a bit.
Well, if the first two periods of action here on Saturday night at the David S. Palmer Arena weren't enough for you, have no fear. The third time's the charm to satisfy that appetite for action. Danville up 5-0 to zero here on the Delaware Thunder. About two minutes left until we see the puck drop. Should see the referees make their way out first, followed by the players shortly after. Dennis, I don't even know what to say about that second <laughs> period, man. It was hectic. It was fun. It was hockey, I think is the best way to put that. We've seen a little bit about everything that you come to a hockey game to see tonight. We saw some really strong offensive play in that first period with four goals. We continue to see a lot of offense in that second period, but only one tally. We've seen a goaltender having a big night, carrying a shutout through the first two periods. We saw a really excellent fight with Levi Armstrong. And then we saw a player completely lose his head and get tossed out. And almost make another couple of players lose their heads. Yeah, there was a lot of, um, and that was all with four seconds left in the period, which is what makes it even more funny. So. Just a strange turn of events, honestly. I yeah, think. very strange end to that second period, but the crowd, is getting their money's worth here tonight at the David S. Palmer Arena with a very entertaining game, but also I think they're pretty happy going into the third period with the hometown boys up by five. Yeah, it's a good look to have here in the closing game of the weekend and quite the showing here offensively from guys like Mitch Atkins, Tyler Quintos, both of them looking to complete a hat trick here and they've got 20 minutes to do so. All right, we got to make a call here again. We were on a betting spree tonight. Why not continue it? Do you think either of them finishes that hat trick tonight? I am going to say that Mitch Atkins is going to cash in with the hat trick. Tonight. And Tyler Quintos with an assist, right? That would be the perfect end to it. Both guys are not only having, obviously, big points nights, but they've been solid on the defensive end as well, Nate. This is what makes this team special is even your best scorers on the team and your best playmakers on the team are also very good on the defensive end. So we're getting good all around play from Mitch Atkins and Tyler Quintos tonight. And boy, oh boy, to think about looking over and, and seeing that these are two guys that didn't start out the year on the club. And they're two big key additions. Yeah, a huge pickup from Coach Ray Tremblay. Now both one, both players traded in on here in the midseason, pretty much during that big amount of injuries, I would say, was about the timing we saw them come in. I know Mitch Atkins traded out for guys like Tanner Hildebrandt and a couple others, and Hildebrandt no longer with the Admirer Enforcers. He did want away from the Danville Dashers, according to reports. and. Nothing confirmed there. Tanner, a heck of a nice guy. So we're glad to see him replaced by another nice guy who can also play, and that's Mitch Atkins. And we're going to have five minutes here where we're going to see uneven hockey, <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're ready for it. Nice and back and forth action here. We'll see Sebastian Damasa Carlson tested. We'll see Harley White trying to keep that clean sheet. It's going to be a lot of fun. So should have four on four, right? Yes, to start the should start. have four on four for a minute and 55. And then three minutes after that exactly of power play for Danville. And a little bit of talking going on over by the penalty box. Charlie Pence having a little discussion with Fred Hine before he went into the penalty box. And quickly, it looks like he had a little escort away from the penalty box, but a lot of laughs among the players. So a little, little getting uh, back together with some of his former teammates here for a long discussion before we start the third period. Yeah, it's kind of mandatory here. We're going to see how the teams come out and play this kind of a third period here. It's going to be really interesting. Just because he's Delaware down five goals, both teams lost a player here for at least a significant amount of time. 155, Fred Hine, and he'll come out. And we open with uh, Quintos and Atkins as the forward line here for four on four hockey. This should be good. 
We've seen a couple hat tricks already this season. Fred Hine getting one. Tessa Rero getting one earlier on on the road. Both of those actually on the road. Gordy Howe hat trick from Fred Hine not too long ago. That was at home. Feels like yesterday. Oh, out in front of that now, an opportunity for Quintos oh. right off the bat as he was found there by Atkins. Just Carlson up to the task. Maybe the fresh ice just doing a little bit too much to aid Quintos. That puck sped off. Go speed racer. Atkins with it behind the net. Now he's pressed along the boards here by Litke. And we're gonna see this one played all the way down here by Delaware. Once again, 921 left to go here in the third period. We've got 413 left on the penalty to Delaware. 108 left on the one to Fred Hines. So four on four for a minute. Uh, not literally a minute, about a minute and two seconds now and then about three minutes of Jenna Worth power play sure to come for Danville. Math is hard, Dennis, and Barakov is coming down the ice now. 77, a shot on the right-hand side, a chest pad save there, rising up to the occasion quite literally. Sebastian Damasa Carlson, as that one took a shot off his left chest pad. That puck was going to sail higher than net, but he just couldn't be sure of that, so he got a body part in front of it. And now he'll face a face-off to his right side. Smart move to get up there in it. It wasn't going to be too far off. I think you were right, though, when you say it was going to be a little bit high, but still Puck better safe than sorry when you're down five. That was a good shot, though. He's done well tonight, only let in one goal so far in about 14 attempts. And a goal there for Delaware, pulling one back. The all-night threat, John Doherty. As Harley White's clean sheet broken up here, with 18.40 gone in the, or back to left to go in the third period. Nice little breakaway and Harley gets beat for the first time tonight. But again, defense let him down a little bit there, letting uh, Doherty get a nice clean look on the breakaway. Some clean passing there from Delaware to set it up. We'll see who gets the official assist on that one. One thing's for sure, big number nine, John Doherty firing at home as Delaware looking threatening here through Doherty again. There's Harley White blocking that one away to his right side, stick and blocker save. And a little bit more calm here from Danville. It's in the hands of the defenseman. They're gonna try and make something happen here through Logan Hoggood. Hoggood with a pass. Finds Armstrong on the right side, a shot saved oh. by Carlson. Beautiful pass by Levi, but Carlson coming up strong. And on the other end of that was Nick Gullo trying to fire it home. Just a nice save there from Carlson. And Danville looking to go the other way. It's gonna be three on three here as we saw a hit in the boards there as two men out of the box here for Danville. We're still gonna see about three minutes of power play. We're on the Jenna Worth power play. Oh, a little mistake here as they let they let the uh, Del Delaware still Delaware needs a player, player in yep. the box. Yep, and uh, the official uh, manning the penalty box realizes he made a mistake. We're only will, human. They will send number two, Ryan Let's Care. Let's see that, Ryan Care. Back to the pen. Jailbreak. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you see, consecutive penalties and you see the home team guy being let out well you just kind of figure that you should let the other guy out as well you know what that feeling is like Dennis I have the perfect explanation <laughs> after being in that situation before in pickup hockey what that situation feels like ready you get out of jail in Monopoly <laughs> two rolls later you land on go to jail that's exactly what that feels like you're out you're free <laughs> and then it's yanked away even worse, you throw doubles to get out and then you throw two more to get you back in. Get you right back in. <laughs> oh. I think after a while I stopped we've playing seen, those rules out of frustration. <laughs> we've seen just about everything tonight. Everything you could ask for now. Three minutes <laughs> flat of Janet Worth power play here for Danville. Tessarero in there with McIntosh. One out by Tessarero, played by Nair. Up along the boards, out alongside two. <laughs> Justin Browsen, now to Tessarero. This one on the side to Fred Hine. Turner, Hine, over to Browsen. He gets a nice stick on it. Backhand opportunity in front. Ooh. Out to the point, see if we get a shot from Sam Turner. We do, swallowed up nicely there by Carlson. Great movement of the puck. 
by the Danville Dashers. Great communication to get the puck into open ice and good hard shot there coming from the top. Five goals on the board for Danville and none by Fred Hine. That's gonna have to change before the end of this game. Browsing on the point over to Turner. Turner loops around here on the Athletico physical therapy sign. This one over to Fred Hine. Hine back to Turner. Turner gonna pass one in, an opportunity there up in the air in oh, front of Carlson. Tesserero almost forced that one through. It comes out to Turner instead. Fred Hine got a little bit of space here. We'll see what he does. It's with a turnaround, Jesse Nayer playing obstacle course in front of net here. Delaware gonna have to deal with him. A shot from Nayer out in the front. 2.09 left to go here in the Jetta Worth power play as Fred Hine circles around behind Nayer. Actually, Turner in there. Oh, Hine, a shot Ooh. that played off the chest of Tesserero right into Carlson, frozen. Also played with a high stick, so it was going to be blown dead either way. I don't know if he actually got a stick on it, but it did look pretty convincing that he had a chance to. So we'll see. A Looks like they of, are going to send it down. Yeah, a lot of action here uh, on this power play. A lot of action in Delaware, kind of content to sit back a little bit in this one as well, as they have quite a bit of time left to kill here on the Jenna Worth power play. Another two minutes to go. Once again, this is still the penalty assessed to Pisano, the major five for fighting, as he was ejected from tonight's game and will not return. Atkins with it down the left-hand side. Atkins out there with Barakov Quintos. Over to Brad Denny on the point. Denny over to Ensor. Ensor off the boot. Back over to Quintos. Quintos on it to Atkins. Atkins to Quintos. Quintos, a right-hand corner shot. Full shot. No. Tyler Quintos thought he had the hat trick. But that was he will get robbed. On absolutely this one. gorgeous passing play there by Quintos and Atkins in a fist bump and a shrug of the shoulders in exchange. Carlson did a nice job at falling flat on that one and stopping any chance of that one floating into the goal. Something Aaron Taylor failed to do last night, we saw one time. Boy, that is a great combination out on the ice. Quintos and Atkins. Two you wonder great playmakers playing well together. If you'll ever see a line of Atkins, Quintos, and Fred Hine. Oh, 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 boy. In a key situation, maybe a three-on-three -three kind of thing, although you would like to have a defenseman out there, but you never know. Seth Ensor on the point now either way. On the Atletico Fitness sign, Brad Denny at the point. Brad Denny with a shot redirect there off the leg. And trying to redirect it in was Danville. It's going to bounce back out and come back. Danville's still going to have it here in the corner. A little bit less fluid on this one as it's out to Ensor. Quintos passes it over to Denny. Denny to Quintos. Quintos trying to chip it in there over oh, past the wide left of the close. goal. And Atkins with it behind the net now over to Quintos. Quintos to Ensor. Ensor with a shot that's redirected in before it can get in there. Got caught up in a massive body. Some nice hand eye there by Quintos to keep it from being cleared out of the zone as Atkins has it. Atkins with it now. A shot that goes wide up. Oh. It was almost batted out there by Delaware. 30. Three's penalty has about 42 seconds left on it. Denny on it now on the right-hand side. He fires one off the bar. As Delaware gonna try and kick this one out and run with it instead, it's brought back. And some hustle play there by Danville, kept in the zone nicely. Ensor with it now. Tyler, Ensor in front of that, tied up there, McIntosh. Tyler Quintos again with a great play to keep that offensive attack alive. Coming down the right-hand side here, Seth Ensor. Ensor over to Nayer. Nayer down the right-hand side, back to Tesserero. Nayer tripped up there, Tesserero lost the puck. A quick hand there from Brad Denny, lets it go, and he grabs it. Fred Hine out there now too, coming down the middle, coming down the right-hand side. He's got a little bit of space here. He elects to look for a pass, tries to find somebody. He's gonna end up connecting with Logan Hoggett, who's fresh out on the ice. He takes a big hit and he's down on the ice. He's back up now, Danville still with the puck. Fred Hine in front, a nice stick check there. From number 59, Brian Dunford, as Fred Hines sends his stick over into the ice, and that's going to be a penalty, and he heads right for the penalty box. <laughs> I saw that one as soon as it happened. Yeah, didn't even wait for it to be called. He was heading right to the box. And we're going straight from a serve, or a Jenna Worth power play to a serve pro penalty kill here. Danville up 5 to 1, 14 47 left to go in the third period. Not exactly a slow third period, not <laughs> quite as fast as the first period so far. So oh. a good game so far nonetheless here. 
We keep adding to our many things that we've seen tonight. Yeah, we do. It's going all the way up the list, and that one thrown down the ice by Barakov all the way to Carlson. Carlson out to Charlie Pence Jr., fresh back out on the ice. Out there with him, number 44, Mark Anthony Simonetta, who has the puck now and skates across the center half. Oh, Simonetta played by Gullo in a big hit, also gets the puck beforehand. It only gets as far as Charlie Pence, who's gonna look to slap it down around the back of the boards. It comes around and it's gonna go all the way to John Doherty. Gets past Doherty and comes all the way down and cleared over the boards. <laughs> Signaled for a tipped up there and that one came out anyway. No harm, no foul. Nice to see Troy Murray get a little payback on that big hit for his smaller teammate, Nick Dello. I think the intensity to hits might pick up here a little bit in the third period. It's always possible a chance here as that one backhanded in. That's another goal for John Doherty. Lifted it up and over the shoulder of Harley White and just under the crossbar and in for the second goal of the night for the Delaware Thunder. Piece by piece by piece, 14.08 left to go here. And that was a power play goal on the serve pro penalty kill for the Delaware Thunder. Harley White upset with himself for missing that shot, but that was a pretty good shot as he elevated just under the crossbar. Face-off lost by Atkins. Winning it there was Evan McIntosh. This one comes all the way back down to Carlson. And we're back to even strength here. This one played into the zone by Barakov. First time we've been five on five all third period. And out to Turner. Turner a slapper, rebounding off the leg of Eric Masters. Birthday boy getting in the way of that shot as he hounds down Turner now. Passed in the front of the net there, Atkins and Barakov both in, trying to shove this one in. Nobody can quite get to it. Carlson does enough to get it out of the way, but Danville, another threatening opportunity here with Barakov, redirected there by Nayer. Instead, it's wide. Comes nope. all the way back around here. Nobody home on the far point. And now coming back the other way is Delaware down the left-hand side. That one swallowed up easily there by Harley White. McIntosh slid in to stop himself, patted Harley White on the shoulder, said sorry for getting a little close there. As sometimes when you're a speedster like McIntosh, it can be hard to slow down in a quick hurry. He does well there to do it. With a nice offensive opportunity, Delaware looking more threatening in the last two minutes than they have for the majority of the game. Now coming the other way, Delaware still holding it here with 13.08 left to go in the third period. And you would assume the game is Fred Hine gonna have an opportunity here down the right wing. Holds up, looks for a pass, picks a pass down the ice. It gets to Quintos, it actually goes out and over the ice. Fred Hine looking a little disappointed with himself in that one. Kind of looking at the stick and uh, questioning whether it let him down there. Fred, a very colorful player. You could always uh, see a lot of emotion on the ice from him. You can hear Jump playing in the background, and Tommy B is up there bumping. He just stopped now, but it was great. That was a funny sight. <laughs> Something about the boards here being checked out by Paul Jean. We're gonna have a short stoppage here. It got a little looks like we're gonna have to repair something. Got a little clarification between periods too. What happened last night with that fan in Charlie Penn's? Apparently the fan was trying to lift the glass up along the bench for the Delaware Thunder last night. So obviously they're not selling near beer here at the David S. Palmer Arena. No. Clearly that was not. Kind of a knucklehead move. It's about as silly as you can get. I don't understand. Then again, I will never try and understand people. <laughs> We're going to take a little bit of a break here, I guess, and get a repair on the glass, although it looks fine from up here, but we're going to have to trust Paul Jean on that one. 
not something I really have a problem with. I, I trust Paul Gene with quite a bit of things. Well, here, so. when you're the chief of officials, right? Yeah, yeah you gotta He's trust got to trust him. He wears a lot of hats in this league. He does. So if anybody knows what to look for in the boards, it's, uh, it's him. So. I won't argue with you there, that's for sure. Although this game, Moving a little bit slower here than we're accustomed to as we head towards the third period. Still a three goal lead for the Danville Dashers at five to two. Yeah, online today, uh, Gene was getting a lot of grief about uh, breaking up that fight last night. But there was absolutely no justification for ripping on him because he did his job. Just shows that sometimes fans just dislike referees so much they will find reasons to complain. <laughs> ah, here's another sheet of plexiglass coming out. Kind of wonder if they're going to move that one maybe down there where they were looking at it. And just replace this one because it's closer? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, the referee's wearing a lot of hats here, doing a lot of extra repair. They took the plexiglass out and put it right back where they got it from. I think they found another loose one here, so. Beats me, Dennis, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Yeah, I can't figure it out, but because they were questioning the one behind the net on the far end, and now we're working on the one over here on the other end of the arena. If you had any plans, move them on. You want to take my job for me for a second and tell us about some of the nights coming up here? <laughs> I'm going to attend to our stream. All right, February 8th. The Reggae Wines Beach Party. There'll be wine samples and giveaways, player appearance at the Catlin American Legion on Thursday nights. This is, sounds like a lot of fun. I think this is where I'm going for dinner next Thursday night. It's a good From choice. 5 to 8 p.m. This will be February 6th, the 13th, and the 20th. Come out and enjoy a burger and fries for only five bucks at the Catlin American Legion. That's Thursday night during the month of February. That sounds like a lot of fun. February 14th, Dishman's, uh, Dishman Kids Night. Child tickets are free with a paid adult. And kids enter the drawings for game night experiences. You'll have the opportunity to drop the ceremonial puck. That'd be a lot of fun. High five the players as they go out on the ice. I watched them doing that last night. The kids were having a ball. And also meet a player with an on ice photo op. February 15th is Pucks and Paws Night. This is another one that I'm really looking forward to. Presented by Classy Critters and State Line Hillcrest Animal Hospital. Danville uh, Humane Society will also be here with some of their pets that are up for adoption. Bring a donation for the Humane Society and receive a voucher for a future game. How, how cool is that? That is a great program. I'm a huge fan of that night with the animal shelter and everything here. Yep. The Humane Society is also in need of paper towels, cat litter, laundry detergent, bleach, and Kongs for the dogs to have something to play with. Be sure to stop by the booster table at the front lobby. Uh, they'll all stay have player buttons for sale and other goodies for sale and learn what the boosters do for the players. What I love, Nate, is the, uh, the little gift baskets that they prepare for the players as they move in at the beginning of the season. It's pretty cool. They give them a big old laundry basket full of lots of stuff that they need there at their apartment. So the Booster's doing a great job, and you can help support the Boosters by buying some of the players' buttons and other goodies for sale. So some of the big nights coming up. Oh, February 7th. How could I forget to get your cowboy hats and boots out? Ah, that's for, exciting. For Country Night, presented by the Vermilion County Fair and B&J Music. And we welcome the Vermilion County Farm Bureau that evening. The first 300 fans 
Well, it'd probably be the first 298 fans because you and I are going to probably We're gonna totally to swipe steal an orange a bandana. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and you can show your support for the local farmers. So uh, a lot of cool nights coming up here in the month of February. We're very active here during the month of February, and it looks like we're about to go back to live action. Live action, live hockey, live sports. Good Lord, that took a little bit, didn't it, Dennis? Yeah, they're just making us work a little extra for their... Uh... Probably deservedly so. This doesn't feel like work. <laughs> this one picked up by Devine along the backside of the boards here. He's behind his goaltender, Carlson, and pushing it up the boards. The first person to it is going to be Troy Murray. As he pushes this one up, Zalak on it now. As that one pushed back into the middle zone here. Fred Hine awaiting a pass. He's going to get it eventually as they get back on side. He threw a hard shot there into Carlson, who eventually has to skate and grab it or risk giving the puck up to Zalak later on here. Carlson waiting for one of his defensemen to take charge. Nobody did. Two dashers rushing for the net. He has to take a face off to his left side now. 12.31 left in the third. And that one won by Danville. A shot from the pointer. Score! Waved off. And that one waved off. Interference call against the Dasher. That's going to go on Levi Armstrong. Wow. Not going to be a happy decision here at the Justin David S. Justin Brazen Arena. is irritated. He feels like he got robbed. And that was a beauty of a shot. Unfortunate there from Levi. As Justin was ready to sell he, and instead gets the whistle blown. It was a quick whistle by the referee. Made the call before the shot even went in past Carlson. But boy, Justin Brazen feels like he was robbed. The serve pro penalty kill here is that shot from the face off is swallowed up by Harley White. That's a big turn of events. That goes from being a 6-2 score to now a power play where Delaware can get within two. And this one is going to be a contentious last couple of minutes here. 12 minutes and 17 seconds left to go. Danville getting this one back through Nair. Nair down the right-hand side. Beats a man on the right. He's got Quintos in front of net. Pulls it back. A nice fake there. He's going to try and wrap it. Quintos with a shot. Trying to shove it through Carlson. Does nice to get down to his left and block it away. And Aaron pass there comes as far as Seth Ensor who throws it right back down the ice towards Carlson. Carlson hands it off there to Charlie Penns Jr. Charlie Penns up to number 28, Thomas Municello. Been awfully quiet tonight compared to last night. Demin gets taken out by his own player there. That was Mark Anthony Simonetta. Not a lot of chemistry here by the new acquisitions. Barakov on it out. Drag with a shot. Oh, it was just flagged wide there by Carlson. Three Delaware players had collided with each other. Out to Simonetta, who throws it around the boards hard. Might be Enser that gets it. It is, but it's trapped up there by number nine, John Doherty, who's one, one goal short of a hat trick. All things said about the performance by Delaware. Doherty almost got himself a hat trick. Oh, a hard hit there as Demin goes into the board. Sam Turner on the hit. And Delaware threatening now. A redirected shot right in front of Harley White as he flags that one out to his right-hand side. Out to the point, another shot wide and high. Swallowed up like a line drive from Harley White. And Doherty was the active stick in front of the net right before that big shot again. Doherty having a big game for Delaware. 11, 08 left, 40 seconds left. On that serve pro penalty kill, that one won by Danville. We'll see if it gets thrown down, it does. Trying to run after it's Jesse Nair. He's got a good chance to get to it. Going up against Daniel to Cristofaro, who gets there first. Nayer wins it back, though, along the boards. He's fighting for it in the, and uh, losing a stick there. Number 15, Bryce Litke, as Nayer had it back. Nayer having his stick held and looking at the official like, hey, you going to call this or not? Litke down the right-hand side here. He's played hard into the boards and loses a skate. Coming down alongside now, Quintos. Quintos out here down, got one man to beat, and Carlson. Carlson, a stellar left-handed grab there to rob Quintos of the potential third goal. Quintos going up top, trying for that far upper corner and almost cashed in for his third of the night. Face off here to the right of Carlson. Won by Danville, pulled back to Hine. Oh, just out of the zone there is John Doherty. Actually make that Brett Menton was pressured and loses it past the blue line. We're gonna have an offside. 
17 for Danville. Levi Armstrong still in the box for about four seconds here. 10.32 left to go in the third period. We would assume that the game here, Danville up by a score of five to two in the later stages of the third period. That one won by Atkins. Atkins it pushes through though and it was lost up to the Delaware defense. That one played out to cutting and recovered by Brett Menton. Menton to Hine. Hines skates back and is looking for Brad Denny. Instead finds himself. He's carrying it through the middle now. Pass one, pass two. Fred Hine a shot from the right-hand side. Rebound out there, open. Somebody's going to get it. Oh, it's Atkins on the end, and now it's Gullo. Gullo trying to find Atkins with the pass. Atkins ends up getting it back from himself. Delaware swarming, and it's Brad Denny with a shot. Rebound out in front. Atkins on it now as he's on it and carries it around and nicely poke-checked over the blue line. We're going to have a delayed offside. It's not touched by Nick Gullo, so coming the other way, with number 55, Kieran Devine, and that shot blocked up before it got to Harley White. Another shot from the point fluttering to the right of White. Brad Denny fighting for this one along the boards here with number 86, Brennan Young. Fred Hine gets that one, passes it out to Gullo. Gullo coming down the left hand, nutmegs a defender, goes to the right hand side, Atkins. Atkins in on goal! Oh, off the inside of the bar and in! Mitch Atkins has a hat trick! What a pretty play. Nick Gello with some beautiful stick handling to get that opportunity going. And then Mitch Atkins making my prediction come true again. Cash it in for the hat trick. Fresh off of the serve pro penalty kill. That one at even strength, but what a play there. Nick Gullo nutmegging a defender on his way to a beautiful assist to Mr. Mitch Atkins who gets the hattie. Boy, that was a pretty play by Nick Gullo, the ever ready, ever ready bunny. Getting that big opportunity and then Atkins with the hat trick. One by Danville here on the ensuing face off. Played along the side here, Levi Armstrong with it. He flubs on a shot and that one comes all the way over to Ryan Kerr who has it along the boards. Kerr and Turner fighting for it. One by De De Delaware who brings it back. Coming down to the left-hand side here, comes over to Care. Care coming down the right-hand side here, a pass into the middle, a dangerous pass there that almost found number 59, Brian Dunford. A big hit there along the glass, draws a few cries of frustration from the crowd. A shot from the point, Harley White blockers it wide. This one out to Armstrong, pressed into the boards, but takes the better of that one as Ryan Care threw him up against it. We're gonna have a delayed penalty here. A delayed offside actually, coming back on it. Thought Armstrong might have got hit with an after the match thing there, but instead we're coming back down the other way through AJ Tesserero. Tyler Quinto still out there with a possibility for a hat trick as well. Levi Armstrong on it now. His stick broke pretty badly over there and he's back on. <laughs> that one unable to be picked up and instead it's gonna be Delaware coming the other way with it. That was Thomas Municello who passed it off and it's coming down the other way now. Barakov might have a chance at this one. He gets there first. Barakov skates back, a nice move there. He's got some space. Over to Murray on the other side. Murray with a hard slapper that was going wide to the left of Carlson. Now Delaware has it back. Trying to play it out to Municello. Instead bounces off and comes all the way out to number nine, John Doherty. Coming back here as Danville fighting to get this one back. It's eventually gonna come along the boards and fighting forward with a strong push there was number 68, Logan Hoggood. It wraps around the boards and comes back out to Troy Murray. Murray on it now, trying to get control of the puck. Bounced off his skate there for a moment. Out to Patrick Zalak, the goal scorer from tonight. One of a few, I should say. And it's turned over to Delaware. Shot from the point here, Litke. Nice save from Harley White. And running at it is Quintos. He's in a foot race. And he's on the right-hand side. Going to pull it back, have a little bit of room. He's in front of goal. A shot, goal! Two hat-tricks on the night for the Danville Dashers. Tyler Quintos with a beauty. What a, what a special play that was by Tyler Quintos. Great stick handling, great patience, great way to find open ice, and then fires it home for the hat trick. And with just over seven minutes left, the Dashers score their seventh goal Tyler Quintos completing the hat trick. Mitch Atkins getting his just a couple of minutes earlier. Danville, for the first time this season, has two hat tricks and a blowout win for now over Delaware. Don't want to speak too soon on that. Suddenly, Carlson's save percentage takes a big hit. Did indeed. That one going to be an offside there on Delaware. And probably better off, Nair had an opportunity there as well. 
Dashers just pouring it out on the offensive end, just showing a lot of hustle here, even with a five goal lead. And a media timeout coming up now. And fans counting it up, they're gonna have to count a long way up there to seven. Dennis, I'm not sure I can count that high. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that University of Illinois education <laughs> coming through. Hey, I was just a journalism major, so not exactly the pinnacle of scholarly effort. Uh, <laughs> did graduate with a better GPA than I thought, though, so that, that's what counts. Got the degree. Graduating is the key. And a degree in scoring here for the Danville Dashers. How's that for a segue? As they're putting on an offensive clinic here against Delaware. Should be noted, Delaware now shorthanded. They have been after Anthony Pisano, a impressive presence on the defensive side. Blew a top and then blew a couple other people's stops and then blew the ice. He was gone. Yeah, like I said, we've seen just about everything tonight here. Hard to believe, though, that there's seven goals on the board for the Danville Dashers and none of them by Fred Hine. Fred Hine did just get on the board with that Mitch Atkins hat trick goal at even strength. He had an assist. He had the primary or the secondary yep. assist. White from goal. Got an assist on that Tyler Quintos goal. And All rightfully right. so as he threw that one down the ice. Tyler Quintos ran down, got it, worked himself around into an open scoring spot and fired past Damasa Carlson with 7-10 left to go here in the third period. Danville up by a score of 7-2. That was such a pretty play by Quintos. I will say someone in the chat did say Danville was going to score eight goals. So if they do that, they're getting a shout out here from me, let me tell you. Well, a lot of good predictions coming true tonight. We're all over it tonight. Our fans are all over it tonight, and the Dashers are all over it tonight. This one played out to Nair. Fans getting their money's worth, too. A nice hand there from DeCristofaro actually kept that one out. Nice hand work, nice hand eyes. This one turned over to Eric Masters, the birthday boy. He passes it back here to Kieran Devine. Going down the left-hand wing now, Delaware throws that one down. It's going to go harmlessly past Harley White. And be played behind the net by, that was number nine, Brett Menton on it. Turned over to Masters. Careless play behind his own net. And there's a nice stick check to make up for it as Danville able to recover on that one. A little bit tripped up, not going to get that at this stage in a game like this one. That one saved a long shot by Harley White as he effortlessly collects that one. A tough pass there, ends up with Armstrong coming back to Menton. Menton looking to get on the score sheet too. He really wants one, doesn't he? And he comes out to Browsen. Browsen with a hard shot on Carlson. Couldn't even see the puck. I don't know how Carlson could have saved that one. Came off of his blocker. And if Browsen faces that one a little bit higher, you gotta believe it's a gold nine times out of 10, eh? And that, that's another one of those, uh, you know, unlikely stories. Seven goals on the night. Fred Hine and Justin Browsen without a goal. If I told you there were going to be seven goals tonight, you'd figure those guys would have cashed in by now, and here we go. Another opportunity here, an open net on the left-hand side instead. Ushered away by Carlson as Taylor Cutting flips this one sky high, gets as far as Ensor. I think that was a hand pass there is probably what's going to be called. But that was a nice, pretty two-man game with Justin Browsen and Levi Armstrong almost cashing in again. Seeing a lot of creative play by the Danville Dashers on the offensive side of things tonight. Very good at finding space so far tonight as they have backtracked, moved around, and not in an unproductive way. Armstrong tries to find Browsen on that one. Two big bodied offensive forwards out there for the Dashers along with Nick Gullo. Browsen on the right hand side. Browsen with a shot. That one redirected up into the air before it could even get over to Carlson. Justin Browsen also not on the score sheet tonight. You don't see that quite as often. Now Browsen with it on the right hand side. A nice soccer pass there. Gets it out of trouble and he almost ends up with it. Instead is Nick Gullo going around him. Gullo played into the boards. Just gets the pass off. Oh a nice backhanded pass there. Danville going to have an opportunity. Just trying to shove it home. Goal! A goal! Levi Armstrong sets it home! What a selling! What a selling! Woo! Levi made a fantastic play to keep that play alive and then cash in, elevating the backhand and beating Carlson. That puck went in and out so fast.
original, uh, I thought they might not call it. And he kept scrapping, trying to shove it back home a second time. But they are going to give him the goal, and that's eight on the night for the Danville Dashers. Danville now with 49 total shots. <laughs> Delaware with 31, so not too bad, honestly, in the shot tally. If you looked at the score, you might think it otherwise here. Right before that goal, Levi's uncle commented in the chat and said he wants Levi to get a point. Well, there's one. Oh, that was a beautiful, beautiful score by Levi. Delaware now coming the other way with it. That one out in front of Harley White, a little bit dangerously. He gets away with it, though. Barakov now gonna try and run with this one. He might get a little space and set a nice defensive play there by Delaware. This one out in front, shot down the ice there by Kieran Devine. Wisely played as that ends up in the hand of Evgeny Demin. This one redirected hard out of play. And Has Levi had an assist tonight? I do not think so. I was just thinking that myself <laughs> after he scored. I wouldn't put it past it. Still four and a half minutes left to play here. 4.33 left to go. As I said earlier in the broadcast, been very impressed with how Levi Armstrong's game keeps getting better and better. That's a play I'm not so sure he makes last year. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right on the head with that. Levi continues to get better in that one. Clear evidence of the scoring potential of Levi Armstrong from McKinley University here in Illinois. A young man from Champaign, the hometown hero. Delaware now content to sit back a little bit on this one, I would say. They're still going to want to go for it, but Maybe a little bit more defensive minded here. Maybe not though, as the Cristofaro comes in a shot off the blocker, Harley White sprawls out to get rid of this one as Fred Hine tries to grab it with a stick. Instead, it comes all the way out to Demin. Demin with a pass over to the left-hand side, gonna have an opportunity here. Delaware just unable to come up with it cleanly was number 44, Mark Anthony Simonetta. Danville now coming the other way with it through Nair. Nair, the speedy big skater. Fred Hine over in the corner. Hine to Atkins, Atkins back to Nair, Atkins with it here in the corner, pressed up against the boards here by Bryce Litke. No one really had the puck, it floated there in no man's land for a moment. And fighting for it now, Danville trying to win it back, it's Jesse Nair with all the hustle. As it's actually Delaware that wins it back, number 28 Thomas Municello coming on the left hand side here. Municello drags it across, trying to redirect it in, dangerous pass there from Municello, a nice play that was almost set up to score instead. Harley White covers the near post, does just enough, and his defense does the rest. Out to Brosnan in front. Brosnan with an opportunity. Brosnan goes hard into the net. And that is a tough play there. Did not look good. Carlson on the ground. Not what you want to see late in the game. Not at all. As Brosnan's up, Carlson looks to be still down. We're gonna watch this one again here on our computer. Yeah, I think Browsen's skate was pulled up. Yeah, it was. Yep. Actually by Delaware's Bryce Litke, it looked like, who pulled Browsen's skate up and Browsen went crashing into Carlson. Dasher's up six with 3.11 to go and we're still seeing a lot of hustle, both in the offensive and defensive ends. Very impressed with the performance we're seeing from the opening face off all the way deep into the third period here. Good hustle by the Dashers. Carlson is up, good to see him up. No harm, no foul there. We're getting the net readjusted and we'll be back to normal. Yeah, it looked to me like he had the skates taken out on him on a uh, breakaway. The only thing we haven't seen tonight would have been a, been a uh, penalty shot. Yeah, that would cross another one off the list. Probably in a closer game, there would have been an argument for that. There definitely was in that one, but it's eight to two in favor of Danville, so I have no problem with them leaving that one off. Oh, come on. We want to, we want to see another thing checked off the box here. <laughs> I'm getting greedy. Masters plays this one right to the feet of Levi Armstrong, who fires one down, maybe looking for a long distance goal there. Instead, just dumps it down to the other end of the ice. That one came off the foot of a teammate of De Cristofaro who played it on. Some nice vertical ability there from the referee on the far side. Hopping over the puck and allowing Delaware to continue their run and it almost ends up with a promising occasion. Masters behind it now, he was the one that had the attempt. Out to the point, De Cristofaro a rocket down on the left hand side of Harley White. Licky in the corner, plays it along the board. It's gonna get caught up by Brett Menton. Comes all the way down to Armstrong. Armstrong pushes it against the wall with his foot. 2.20 left to go here in the third period, 8-2 Danville. 
Back behind the goal here is Nick Gullo. Nick Gullo kills a little bit of time. 2.08 left to go here in the third period. 8 to 2 Danville. Come the other way with it, Brett Menton. Menton's got some speed. He's got some speed downhill, that's for sure. Barakov over there, turned over. It's gonna be coming the other way through Ryan Kerr. As he fires a shot that goes off the boards. A little bit wide there. Nayer, the first one to it, he's played off the boards. Barakov almost finds a way through, almost seemingly impossibly. That one bounces oddly off the boards of Harley White, and he seals up that far side, and it ends up on the stick of Patrick Zalak. Down to a minute and a half. Seth Ensor. That shot fired to the left of Harley White. Taylor Cutting plays it along the boards. Cutting back with it now. Plays a nice pass there into Harley White. Dangerously off the sidebar. And actually a nice pass there by Taylor Cutting. Danville going to try and run the other way with it now. They don't have numbers. They had it for a second. This one brought back a nice drop off to Zalak. What a Boy. save there by Carlson. Another pretty play by the Dashers, and they almost cash in for the ninth time tonight. Tommy B announcing Carolina losing to Danbury again over the intercom. That's going to get some positive reviews from around here. Still firmly in the lead for that first place spot in the league and in the Western Conference, but nonetheless, a good sign. You don't want any team to go unbeaten, especially not after what Carolina did last season. Starting to see, a, you know, maybe a little tape to show other teams how to beat them. Yeah, yeah, it's always possible. You've seen these guys a couple of times now. Danbury actually taking them down a couple times. A shot from the left-hand side here on it there was Jesse Nayer. Carlson does nicely to stop that one with 53 seconds left to go here in the third period. Eight to two, Danville left with 54, just about 53.7, so we'll split the difference. I'll say 53 once and 54 once. How's that, Dennis? That works for me. Played behind here, Litke with it. Trying to play it up, Delaware just unable to get anything past the red center line here as Nayer come the other way with it. Nayer loses it up. He's going to try and win it back here right in front of Carlson. It's played back behind, now coming the other way. Simonetta passes it out. Comes all the way out to Demin. Demin creating a little space for himself down the left-hand side here. It fires a shot right into his attacking partner there on the other side. That was number 28, Thomas Municello. When they've connected, they've looked good. But when they haven't, they pass the puck into each other. It hasn't looked great. You got to think as it goes on, they'll build some more chemistry and work on that, and they'll be a really good offensive pairing up there for Delaware. That one redirected up into the air on Harley White. That one bobbling around. Ends up behind the net with three seconds to one as the clock is going to run out here as Fred Hines sees the Dashers off to a win. But really all the focal point, Mitch Atkins, Tyler Quintos, creating, scoring, defending a complete game from them. And no doubt they're going to get our stars for the night, two of them. The third one we'll talk about in just a minute. But first, got to mention on a night where Port Huron won, it was essential for the Dashers to keep winning, especially with Carolina dropping a game to Danbury, the River Dragons dropping a game to Elmira, and Battle Creek ends up dropping one to Watertown on the road in overtime. So Battle Creek gets some more points on the season. Good to see them. That was a tight game there, 4-3 to three the final score. Danville, 8-2 to two win here at the David S. Palmer Arena on a crowded night on Saturday night. You love to see that, Dennis. Very, very exciting game from start to finish for Danville in full command here. Strong performance in the net by Harley White. Great to see the sportsmanship after the game, too. Got to see uh, Taylor Cutting go up to a bunch of the Danville Dashers players. It's always good to see. And visit with them before heading home. Good to see. Mitch Atkins, Tyler Quintos, and Brad Denny, your first, second, and third stars. I'm calling it right now, Dennis. If I get all three of them, I get credit for something. <laughs> I don't know what I'll get, but I'll give myself credit. Yeah. And tough, it's a, tough to come up with that third star because there were a lot of guys that had good games tonight for the Dashers. This was a complete everybody up and down the roster had a good performance tonight. Great it, to see. It certainly was. There were seven 
guys without a point and nine guys with a point. So anytime you have more guys with points on your team than without points, you're gonna be looking at a high scoring game for your team. Mitch Atkins, the point leader, three goals, two assists, five points on the night, no doubt gonna be the first star for me. Tyler Quintos, a close second there though, three goals, one assist on four points. Brad Denny, the reason I put him as my projected third star, three assists on the night. Two penalty minutes and a long couple of defensive shifts for Danville, essential on the penalty kill. Fred Hine also coming in with two. Seth Ensor with two. Nick Gullo with two. Zalak and Armstrong both with one apiece. And Artem Efimov Barakov with an assist on the night as well. Here they come. I nailed it. First star, Mitch Atkins will come out last. Brad Denny, the third star here. Very good recognition for uh, one of the, the main defensemen who's healthy and here to play. The first recipient of the Hattie, Tyler Quintos. Big game both offensively and defensively for Tyler. And Atkins coming out last. Last but certainly not least, he's gonna get a lot of love from this crowd for a performance like tonight. Such a humble, friendly guy, too, as well. You love to see them succeed. That's the kind of guy you want on your team. Got to meet his folks here uh, a few weeks ago when they were in town to watch uh, their son play. And Not hard to see where he gets his good manners from. Yeah. What an incredible Saturday night here at the David S. Palmer Arena. The fans, and there are a ton of them here tonight, are all going to go home incredibly happy. Well, a good game tonight for the Danville Dashers. Eight to two, the final score here after the end of the third. A big crowd gonna go home happy tonight as we head towards the end of the weekend. We'll be back here again next weekend for another exciting round of FPHL action. We'll be taking on the Elmira Enforcers in the only home series that we have against them. That'll be on Friday and Saturday. Sure to be a fun night. We got country night coming up as well as a couple other things that we have planned. A great game tonight from Mitch Atkins, Tyler Quintos, and the Danville Dashers. Ray Trombley, no doubt a lot happier about this game. Four goals in the first, three in the third with that one in the middle. That was a little bit quiet in the second period aside from an ejection. So, you know, that's okay. There was a whole different energy to the club before the game tonight than last night. Last night they came out really flat. Tonight they came out on fire, cashing in in the first 30 seconds and then quickly dominating this one to go cruise in a way to an easy win on a Saturday night. And that's about gonna do it from us here. We'll see you again next weekend. Thanks for tuning in on the Danville Dashers Broadcast Network. Have a safe and calm and maybe not calm, maybe not if you don't want it to be calm. A fun night, but nonetheless, whether that's at home asleep or out on the town. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for tuning in here to all our friends from Delaware. Thanks for tuning in and good luck the rest of the season. For Dennis Michelson, I'm Nate Williamson. Have a good night.